pretty damn. I say good stuff. <laughs> we'll start off. Uh, we'll start off. Um, I'll intro. I'll say what's up, fool. And I'll introduce Bush Escobar right away, so you could just jump in, and um, we'll talk about wormholes. All right, you're like, live. Wormholes. What, 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 what wormholes. That shit led to you. Oh, really? Wormholes. What's up, fool? Podcast. Welcome to the quarantine. What's up, fool? Podcast. We got Bush Escobar right here. Just came back from filming over the top three. We got Lisa, es- Lisa Esparza with her fit watch. We got uh, James Callahan. What's we up? got the black dick behind Butch. We got uh, Martin Rizzo. What up, boy? The yeah. kid. And we have um, we have fucking Toby Hicks dressed like Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> the PlayStation One character, bro. Yeah, bro. Just bacon back bowling. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, fool? Oh, shout out to um, Pinole Blue. Pinole Blue. These fools always send me these um, corn husk. Um, Pinole. This stuff right here, man. You mix it with milk and add a little bit of sugar or honey or no sugar. And this shit keeps you going, man. This is what, the, what made the Mayans finish those pyramids. Oh, the Tarahumara, the runner. Oh, shit. Yeah, you ever watch those Mexican ladies, those uh, marathon runners? They Uh, run fucking barefoot. They run marathons with no shoes. Hey, did you see that? This is what they drink. It's a They they wear shoes. They wear wear the huarache thing. That fool also (laughs) makes it in. He makes it in cookies, too, if you want to get them. Pinole blue cookies. Also, he has the newer ones. Those azulitas, I eat those. I eat two of those. It's 160 calories. And like only what, three grams of sugar or something like that. And then I work out. That's my pre workout little snack. They're not paying us to say that. They're just giving us free shit. So. But they, nice. do give us, they do give us a lot of that. Felipe drinks it all the time. Oh, one of their, um, one of their um, TikTok videos about the story about their company went viral because that guy started off from his home. He's from the Midwest. And now he delivers blue pinole tortillas all over the country. So yeah, he gets his supplies. Small, from Mexico. small business. Yeah, he gets his supplies from Mexico, from like a small yeah. over there. So, so that's what's up with him, yeah. man. We have Bush Escobar right here, man. What's, what's up, up? Hey, Escobar, man? Uh, uh-huh. I don't know if you listened to the Joe uh, Joe Diaz podcast. We mentioned you, real. I did. Real I saw cool. that, man. I saw that, and then I got like. Message after message after message for like five days of people clipping it up and sending it to me. Thank you, man. I love when you talk about me, bro. I love it because people bro, hear that. It's you've been a char- you've been a character in my mind since day one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no lie, Butch. Ever since you gave me that card, that your old school black and white card. Yeah. So on it, and one time, mom, I guess I was loaded in my when we were me and Lisa were living in a fucking studio, dog. Studio apartment. This nice. before the loft. And, and um and, after, uh, the after the loft. The loft. You moved and, down. Uh, <laughs> Downgrade. Isaac, <laughs> my stepson, Isaac Hayes, Lisa's son, he was walking in his diaper and he picked up your call with attitude and he put it in my face. Who's Butch? <laughs> well, he, said, he couldn't read yet. He said, Who's this? You said Butch and he went, Butch. Who's Butch? And he, yeah, he's nice. Instead of like uh, Butch, like um, Fred Stoller Vaughn, he's another one. Oh. Nice. I think that was I the like picture it. when you had your big mutton chops, right? Yeah, yeah, I had a mutton chop, and then I had this Wolverine. like uh, mutton. Like I had this thing going down here, and then this. You know, lately I've had a beard, but I had I, I, I got really freaked out with the COVID nineteen. Like I got really, like I, I had no. I, I, I was already getting it before I got it. You know what I mean? I, and I was you are out. COVID. So <laughs> yeah, and so I wanted to make something that fit my mouth. You know, at least fit like so I could wear my mask and not have like hair poofing out the sides and stuff like that. So you said you did have it? No, I didn't have it. But I oh. thought I I, can, I I I think I have it like every other week. Since yeah, it's me too, out. dude. So the hypochondria What's- kicking in or what? You know, you're laying in bed, you just finished smoking weed, you know, and all the, and you're having a hard time breathing after you just coughed like <laughs> like a, a couple a couple of like balls of res, and you're like, man, oh dude, I'm having a hard time breathing. Baby, baby, 
I think I have COVID. And she's like, you just smoke weed, take some asthma inhaler, and you'll be fine. So <laughs> that's what Birdman said. <laughs> wow. wow. Shout out to Birdman. What's Big up? Bird. We got Toby Hicks over there dealing with the Barona virus. Radical. <laughs> Man. The COVID-19. Hey, Toby, how you been, Toby? How many gigs been canceled? Everything. All of them. I, you know, it's, uh, uh, I don't even know what to say. It's going to be a while. I ain't even, I mean, I'm to the point where, hey, uh, shit. It's going to be a while. I, I went through the fire thinking I had this shit. You know, everybody <laughs> didn't went through that, Butch. I mean, that shit. But, uh, yeah, this is this is some 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 brazy times, y'all. Yeah. Some brazy times. I know, bro. You, you didn't have coronavirus, but you had that bone nail. Yeah, the bone. The blood toenail. media. The bone nail. The when your 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 finger got all huge, right? Yeah. Toby had a fucking oh, yeah. finger nail that blew up. Yeah, yeah. Perfect that, for that was, that perfect was for wild, hiking, dude. bro. Those are painful. Yeah, Hitching, I mean, all right. What the fuck, hiking? Hey, you know what's crazy? I went to go get a manicure, right? And the nail lady, uh, hey, nail lady, she told me, uh, she said, "Oh, your nail is." She said, "It's gonna, it's going back. It's gonna go back to normal, and it's getting, it's gotten a lot better." Yeah, that was a hell of an experience. Oh. That shit exploded. Oh, I'm oh, gonna get you suck a finger. Um, <laughs> but, just but missing you, the stage. Bush Escobar. Uh, every once in a while, well, when I'm on the road or at my home, I bust out and I, his um his um post on Facebook always show up. Yeah, and I go over there, man. And God damn, there's a lot of comics out there who still open micing that know him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> during during the coronavirus, yeah, or, or with anything, with any any um any anything um that's happening in the world. I don't. Uh, one of your posts, one of your posts really drew my attention, and I, I try to mention it on um on Joe Joey. Diaz podcast. Yeah, and I try to talk every time I talk about it with other older comics or comics who have been on the road a long time. I would come to it, you know, like um, where are you at this time? Because uh, that was real deep as um. Um, post you made. Not a lot of people have made posts like that, and um, a lot of your friends, the open micers, they didn't get it. But um, no, <laughs> but it's deep, bro. It's like you know, where are you? But um, I, I don't, ha I can't grab it on me. But one of the things you said that um, because you really broke it down like before anybody else did that um, if you're a touring comic, they used to do like Kevin Hart style. He's gonna have to come down to theaters now. Right, a theater comic, that was gonna fucking start going back to the clubs, and whoever was there before him, it's gonna go back. He's gonna start busting out Tuesday nights. Right at the bars. And we know yeah. where, where do they leave everybody else? Also, man, I never thought about this. So right now, if you're a fucking um, corporate comedian, ain't shit out there. You're, you're Hell, broke, no, dude. Bro. Dan no, Nine no. is hurting right now. <laughs> no, those cruise ship comedians. Yeah, exactly. Save your well, chips. For Grace Hahn is chilling. Yeah, uh, da, da, for for reference, Dan Ninen is. Uh, oh, I know that guy. He is a yeah. yeah he, he's annoying. He emails. Oh man, that guy emails all the time. Not anymore, but years ago he would. He's uh, he's awful. He's awful. But he brags he about being a corporate his, like, comic. Press kids. So. And what they say is that he'll go sit, he'll go sit up in first class take a picture of himself and be like on the way to the next Intel gig. And then he has to go back. And and yeah, that's my thing, man. <laughs> and he would brag about me. how you made like hundreds of thousands of dollars every year. Just doing corporate, just doing corporate. Hey, I'm glad they I'm never glad say their I money or what? Jesus. I'm, gl I'm glad I don't know that motherfucker. I, I don't know who the fuck you talking about. I'd be riding with him. Yeah, I hate to you give know. him. I hate to give him any kind of recognition, but if it's anything, He's uh, he's just an awful human being. Um, let's go but, beat him up, dog. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll just, he, hey, let's go steal his money. Put him in a headlock. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but the, hey, and hey, over the, the top the two. <laughs> the, 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 Straight to hey, book the cruise, DVD. The cruise ship, the cruise ship comedy might be done forever. It's gonna be a while. Oh yeah, cruise ships, yeah. buffets. Wow. It's a lot of shit that ain't gonna never come back to normal. It's not. Wait till they get it back. You know. You know what? It was gone. Nothing against Justin Rivera, but 
Face to face magic. Oh, you can't ah. walk up on stage anymore, dog. No, Why do you volunteer? Watch it anymore. Oh, oh, you a a volunteer. Around tables. Yeah. <laughs> you and your little balls get back on stage. I, I think. <laughs> I, I think the thing that happened for me, you know, when the first shutdown happened, I was like, "It's cool. I don't have to email anybody, and I don't have to worry about who gets on TV next." You know, like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Felipe. <laughs> hey, Felipe. Yeah. What about that comedian that does the, the uh, on stage with the arms behind him when he gets on? <laughs> <over there? laughs> who? Who? <laughs> who? Dog. There's a couple yeah. of them, dog. Yeah. You can't be. That's like you can't get behind the one no more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, get, in fr- get in front, homie. <laughs> hey, Rodrigo, I What's think up, you, should just, you should just bust out that little fucking puppet you have, bro, and make a little mask, dog. Listen, dude, we'll do it on the next podcast. But, dude, my son has that little fool now. He won't let him go, dog. <laughs> hey, hey boys, Japan. Uh, Rodrigo Japan, bought Japan. a puppet, bro. He's trying to get a little. He's trying to make him like a little. Trying to, get, trying to get to the prop comic action there. Dude. <laughs> you could be like the Mexican Jeff Dun- Jeff Dunham, bro. You could be oh, like, the- hey, what's up? This is my cholo puppy. Yeah, Jeff Diaz. The Mexican Geppetto. Jeff, Jeff hey, Diaz. Man, every, hey, everything that changed. I mean. I'm happy for? I'll take you all with me, dog. Yeah. To the top. Did, did, y'all see, uh, did y'all see Jazzy Jeff talking about what the virus? Jazzy? Jazzy Jeff. Wait a minute. Jazzy Jeff? He caught Jeff? the virus. Yeah, DJ Jazzy Jeff. He oh, had the yeah. virus, right? Oh, yeah. In oh, the beginning, man. though, right? Yeah, he like had it first in the couple beginning, months. and he told how fucked up it was. And he just said, Little "Look, he said crates. he was, he said he was in the recent. All he did was walk through the audience, got to his, you know, his area where he was working, and that was it. And he caught the shit. And he was like, oh, he's like, he man. might quit DJing. He's like, he ain't fucking with that virus no more. He said he don't never want to feel that shit again the way he felt." You know that fool in the audience trying to pick I up. I heard, I heard it. So it's like, <laughs> like that's the thing is if you survive it. You're still suffering complications. I, 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 Your lungs. I yeah, complications, <laughs> Ratsa. Complications. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, you know, you, you like all these people are talking about, like, well, you know, like, because I have a lot of people who try to convince me that, look, bro, the odds of blah blah blah, you die. It's like I don't care. I want to get it. Dude, I don't, don't want to struggle with that shit, what? dog. Yeah. Hey, and hey, look, here's the other thing that motherfuckers ain't thinking about. Okay, let's just say a young person gets it, they uh, recover, and everything is fine. <laughs> now you're a COVID patient. Now you have a pre existing condition, and your insurance is high as fuck for the rest of your life, man. Right. Motherfuckers ain't thinking, man. Right. It's a lot deeper than just getting it and getting well. It's a whole no, bunch of you're other fucked, shit. Man. The damage it does to your tissue inside and all that stuff, your cells. I mean, nobody really knows what the fuck yet. So they uh, say. I I read I read an article and then um, my neighbor my roommate was telling me about a podcast with a doctor. They're finding out that it's not respiratory; it's blood clots. It's tiny little blood clots. Your blood coagulates in certain areas, and in your lungs, where you have the thinnest veins, that's the problem. Is they're like those little blood clots are getting into your lungs, and then you're and then that's what's causing people to have a hard time breathing. Damn. Causes inflammation. Your lungs are basically swelling the air out of them. Bumba clot. Yeah, it's crazy. Hey, I'm so of... skinny. If I get, I mean, I might get, the, I get them blood clot. I won't last a day. How I'll thin are those veins? <laughs> Toby or yeah. Toby, you put a bean bag, little bean bag on here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Relative, call the ambulance. <laughs> hey, remember when uh, uh, Rizzo came? He went to Chicago with that little ass jacket on. <laughs> oh, when, yeah. it, 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 hey, it cold, the dude. coldest, the coldest day in the world, dog. Oh, it's like oh, he called the winner. Oh my he god, dude! A little ass jacket on. <laughs> That's dude, you. You didn't think it was. I didn't think it was gonna be that cold, dog. I had no oh, idea. Man. Just running. Hey, hey Butch, yeah. it was cold, man. Toby looked around and said, "Man, Chicago, y'all can have this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard Chicago gets real cold he, real he, quick. It was super cold, and then the next day we went to New York, and it was cold as hell, dog. Dude, Chicago yeah. walking from the Uber to the fucking hotel, oh. which was just the sidewalk, was fucking cold, dude. All our eyes, all our hands were like ice, and that's that day we seen a uh, war with yeah. uh, Dwayne and uh. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, I still we're rather st- have hot than cold, though. Uh, yeah, I'd rather have cold. Yeah. Dog. But you fucking had this heat. The the person yeah. told us that we're staying down the street from the bar where uh, Jeffrey Dahmer used to go pick up his victims. Oh my god, Boys Town. 
There, yeah. I heard that there's. Oh, um, he's from Milwaukee. It's the next state over, dude. A little drive, yeah. dog. I heard that you could take a yeah, tour, went- a Jeffrey Dahmer tour of like all the places Jeffrey Dahmer either chilled or killed somebody. <laughs> that is bad. Ass. We'll take that tour. Yeah. <laughs> That's the last tour of your life. <laughs> Chicago has a lot of tours, huh? Because we went, we went to the we went to the Home Alone house. Really? Yeah. When yeah we, were, that we were outside was... standing like this, and then the owners came out, and then her son came out. I, I said, "Damn it!" <laughs> was it no, that town, Winnetka? No, is that what, there what was so was many people driving by and taking a photo. Great. We got some. We got some. See, there were some Sikh motherfuckers showed up and shit with their long ass beards. Dude, that was badass, man. They have, all happy, bro. awful. So they have the uh, Mrs. Doubtfire house in San Francisco. Oh, nice. that'd be cool. Oh. And and so on the day that Robin died, I drove by, like you know, to pay my homage as well, because it's a known place. It's where people go to take pictures, and there's people gathered outside, and I yell out the window, "All that wasn't his real house, you idiots!" And it just yeah. ripped everybody. And like, I was loud because I was like, "Dude, Robin would have thought that was funny," but yeah. like, hey, man, well, you're funny, or you were dressed like Miss Doubtfire. <laughs> hey, fool! How about if they're at the at the Full House house instead of <laughs> you fucking idiot? Robin would have thought that was funny. That's funny. That would have. Yeah. Yeah, you never know. Huh? Robin Williams would have took that and did it in New York. Yeah, yeah. I I got to uh work with him a couple times at some AA shows and like <laughs> dude that dude is like all the time like that. But one of the cool things about Robin Williams is he would walk up to you after a good show, after a good set and make cuz he knew it was important to us for him to come up and be like, "Hey, that was a really good set. You did a really good job." Yeah, man. That's true. He always went out of his way and he always did those shows, man. That dude but I, I just think yeah, he, he like did that funnest sense of humor ever, man. For he sure. He the improv, Hollywood improv. I was this is not, this, this story is told by me by by the Alec Ramundo and Martin. Alec Ramundo had a great set, and Robin Williams told him good set, and um, he 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 fell off the wagon that night with Robin Alec Ramundo. Did. Yeah, Robin really? Williams. Did. Yeah. Yeah, but that fool got a half a glass full of vodka. And um, what the party um, started? And uh, and other Mundo took a shot, and they were he had a drink, and he he left. Dang! And then that's Freaking when Alex. it's always cool, man, when you meet a an old comic or a veteran, and they they just take the time to chill with you like for five hey, minutes, three minutes. I, I had that Robin Williams. Story. Hey, I'll be like this. Hey, are you hungry, dog? <laughs> Look, yo, okay. I uh, I got a Robin Williams story. I did the comedy store on a Tuesday night. Uh, Years ago, and Robin Williams was there. And wait Robin till he tell you like. Dyer. So uh, I went up and did my thing, Ooh. and afterwards he was telling me good set, and he was talking to me about yeah. my set. Now I'm about to tell you who he was with. He was with a black man, and the limo pulled up, and the black man was like, "Yo, Robin, come on, whatever." Robin was trying to talk to me, and it was just kind of foul the way the brother played it, and it was Spike Lee. Robin Williams, oh, Williams no. Spike Lee. Always the brother against you, brother. And I'm like, damn, you know, I mean, like he was Spike. Just telling me something real quick and he was going to leave anyway. But Spike was like, come on, Robin, we ain't got time for that shit. And it was, <laughs> it was just kind of foul. <laughs> he just happened. another brother. Yeah, yeah, Spike hey, Lee did hey, that shit to so, me. Hey, so what did, uh, what, did, what's, what did Robin Williams tell you? Fuck fat people. <laughs> no, he was just telling me good job and whatever. This thing's a fuck fat people. <laughs> don't go that that's a piece, it's a little bit a little piece in his bit yeah that's funny relative yeah man I, what you were saying earlier though when you meet like i remember i was at a hotel i was me and my ex were staying with like i was staying with my dad she was staying with her parents we didn't really have any alone time so we got that uh that hotel that you guys always go to when you perform at the improv we got a room there, and it was when Summer Jam came, and Russell, Russell Peters was performing. And so I was downstairs getting my girl, you know, like because there was no uh, cans of Coke, so I was getting her some Coca-Cola downstairs, and I seen Russell. Now, I don't normally go up to, like, celebrities and talk to them, but I do know uh, I, I have this a lot. Night. 
I have a lot of mutual <laughs> friends with them. So I was like, you know, I just went over and was like, hey, man, I'm good friends with Edwin and Felipe and George Perez. And he was like, those are good friends of mine. He goes, you have time to have have a drink. And I was like, well, I'm I'm going to I'm just getting a Coke for my girl. And he goes, let me send up. And he looks at the lady, goes, send up a care package or whatever you call it up to this room. That's and he goes, come on, let's have a drink. Chop, chop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I think I was all, yeah, do it now. And like, uh, some uh, bottles, y'all. A standard care package that Russell said. Yeah, we had McDonald's. Yeah, I, I get up there, there's like uh. 20 condoms and, and shoes. Um, <laughs> and like, uh, we not, use these uh, Rolex. Like, uh, we're chilling at the bar and we're talking after a while. And I finally go, yo, man, like, I'm, I'm cool with this conversation, but I'm kind of like, I'm talking to you. Why are you talking to me? kind of thing and he and and he said something cool man he goes uh look around this place he goes me and you are actually the same person we're both we're there's where are there any other comics in this room and i was like yeah there's not he goes so me and you are the only comics in here like we're in the same we're in the same boat in that aspect you know, maybe like I have a better like I think he said something like I have a better suite than you do, but <laughs> yeah, man. You know, he was like, "We're on the same boat. We're we're comics. That's why I'm having a conversation with you." And it was one of the coolest things that ever happened to me in comedy, man. It was the coolest like time I ever got to chill, have a real conversation about comedy with like a comic. That's how um, I feel, also, man. Like, um, and um, Toby Hanks will tell you too, like from touring with us. Like I might I might not know a lot of comics who are really really big personally, or or, or sometimes I might I might think they don't know me. Right. But when we're in the fucking airport waiting for the same fucking plane on the same fucking flight, we're like we're in the same group, bro. Like yeah. One time um when when Rodrigo played that um that practical joke on the dice man, I don't know if you heard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did Going not. On here, that. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that though. We'll get to that. But um, Dr. Hewley was there afterwards, and he was talking to a dice man, and we already we were talking to his opener. Um, what's her name? Um, uh, Eleanor. Eleanor Cal- we were talking to Eleanor. Uh, we were all together in the same Eleanor. group, and then Tom Papa showed up. Frank, we call him Frank Sinatra because he wears that hat. And what's his name yeah. too? Um, some, some other white comic. Um. <sighs> And a bald headed dude, what's his name? Bill Burr. Yeah. And we're all right the, we're all chilling and this shit. Oh, the fucking Brad Wheeler showed up, bro. I have to <laughs> put his fucking luggage huh. upstairs. Huh. I, I, I put that shit on the top. I told everybody. <laughs> put it on the top of the closet. Put that fucking outfit. I forgot that he cannot reach the his to put his luggage on top. Right. Yeah, he's short. So I put it up for him. Here you go, buddy. And, um, and me and him went to. He, he stood in first class. And I went to the back row to my 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 little private window seat, with no one sitting in the middle, and no one sitting in the fucking aisle. Distancing my my private window seat. That's the best way to. Uh, I have the private window seat in. Hey dog, you're in a jet, dog. Six F. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I feel, I, I feel cool. Like, hey man, yeah. I don't say much, but I'm going to. Do it. <laughs> Dude, any any comic that's ever taken the bus or somewhere, I mean, other interpretation of being on a plane. A plane yeah. is luxury, bro. Oh, plane yeah. is luxury. I don't, dude, hey, I I don't give a, a fuck, dude. I when took a bus to El Paso, man. Oh my god. When you get a I flight, t- I took the bus to El Paso before too. We all the yeah. limousine. I've the the bus. Actually, I've taken that probably the same bus you guys took to El Paso. Dude, the Mexican rapido. bus, the limousine. That's just the first yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to get a car. That was the first. I remember when my mom passed, I was like, dude, my dad was like, all right, you can get something huge. And I was like, I'm going to get a, I'm going to give me a brand new car. This is like five, six years into my comedy career. But I knew that all the traveling I was doing by taking the bus and I just wanted a car so I could drive back. And that's when I got the cube. And like, I, man, I put, oh, close to 200,000 miles. Like within a few years, like within a few years. I mean, I got that, oh man, almost a decade ago. And I sold it three years ago and it had 200,000 plus miles on it. I mean, I drove it from the East Coast and back. As a comic, car is key, man. 
Oh, yeah. Especially in California, dog. Yeah. But flying is, it's a luxury. Whenever I get them, that's why I love doing those military gigs, man, because they fly you, you know, they fly you, they give you a hotel and like it feel it's nice, you know, like it's nice to just fly somewhere and be like, all right, I don't have to like, I don't have to, I don't have to do this long drive when, to wherever. We had, we had uh, George Perez on the show and um, I don't know if he answered my question, but did, when you went with him to Corpus Christi, did you guys fly or drove? Oh, we went to McAllen. McAllen, uh, you got McAllen. To, dude, that, oh. that bar you're talking about, we didn't get too much into it with um, George, but me and um, Rodrigo went there with um, Keith Manning, bro, the first time. Uh-huh. Man, they fucking took care of us, bro. Yeah, they take like, good care of you that, out there. That fool Isaiah, whatever his name is, he, he brought up. He the Centennial up, Club. He, it's a tenio. Yeah, he made it's called go, bro. It's called go for Rodrigo, and he brought a drink like a, a this drink that had a flame on it for Keith. Flamingo. He made um he made vegan um hot, a sausage for me with vegetables. Man, I put yeah. Drink. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Right. in this world, dog. Stories. We had a rough go that week that was <laughs> <laughs> what happened though hey bro Hello. George is oh, like working hey, with George. Superman <laughs> Superman Mario and um the homeboy the other homeboy Mario Super the Mario Salazar Mario. Ray Orta uh no I met Raymond wasn't there that week it was just me and and, and man shout out to George because that was the first real hard like road, road gig, gig. Like where it was like, hey, because like every time something happened, he would look at me, mm-hmm. and if it was it was bad, and there was a lot of bad on that trip, he would go, Whoa. "Hey, bro, you we're about to find people." He go, "This is the road, dog. <laughs> this is the road." <laughs> I'd be like, "Hey, I'd be like, hey, dude, hey, I flew in. Scary, huh? We're you about to fight road, somebody." You know, you know truth over here, eh? Hey, bro, it's we like in planes, trains, and automobiles when John Candy turns to him and he's the yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you walk into this hotel. And I'm thinking, like, dude, it's the hottest I've ever felt any weather in my life. It's horrible hot over there, dog. Hey, bro, it's horrible hot. And we roll up into this hotel, and I'm thinking the lobby has to be cool. It's a hotel. It's These hotter people. inside. Not hey, this man. lobby, dog. It was hot inside. There's this huge fat dude with sunglasses. And Mario, <laughs> that was me, dog. Mario Salazar. I mean, huge, like a pile, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like a pile of humid. And Mario and, and, he, and Mario, I'm checking in my comics for the show and uh, and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, that's cool, dog. But if these guys fuck around, I got some boys that come fuck them up, dude. Like the last guys you had, they didn't want to leave. We had to force mad to call my homeboys. And like, I'm like, I'm good, bro. I have, I was bartender at the time still. I was still making good money. I was like, let's just get a hotel, like a nice hotel. I can't deal with this. And George is like, no, this is the road, dog. You have to learn. And hey, like, doggy, doggy. hey, bro. That's how I learned, dog. Oh, we got up man. we got up in the hotel and turned the AC on and it smelled like dirty socks. I'm oh. not even kidding you. And then <laughs> I've been so there, dog. We finished that gig and the next day we get in the car with Mario and go, hey, look, bro, I'm, I don't tolerate much, bro. Like, we need a hotel or somewhere with air conditioning. He goes, no, hey, the place I'm going, we're taking you next. The guy has a nice house, has air conditioning, and it was this is dude Isaac Guerra who runs yeah, no, in El Rey out there, and he was like, uh, he had a beautiful house. He treated us well, but his air conditioning broke down that week. Oh, and we, spent, we spent like five or six days in 110 degree weather. Plus, hey, dog, oh. hey, 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 hey. like Butch, it happens every week over there, dog. And uh. and <laughs> at the same time, we were snorting our lives away, bro. Like I was like. <laughs> You know, I don't just like, live, eh? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, hey, bro, no, no, that makes you sweat more, huh? Yeah, yeah make you hotter. That's some good ass coke down there, though. Huh, you dog? couldn't, hey, you couldn't sleep anyway, it was too hot. So I was like, I'm just gonna was, just snort myself in an oblivion until I get back home. Because uh, they give you, because wow. like, how okay, so how you do a show in California, you know, or Colorado or something, someone comes up with like a bag of weed and be like, good show, man, here's some of my weed. It's the same thing out there with Coke, bro. People walk up to you and they're like, hey, like, hey, good job, bro. And they give you a little bindle. Yeah. There's, but- there's always four feet underneath the like uh, the, the the stalls in the bathrooms. And you, man, that back then I never bought it for a good reason, because once it's in my hands, it don't leave. And uh, <laughs> woo! that was a trip, man. I remember Felipe called us and saved us. 
Because he was like, hey, bro, it's not like the border checkpoint in San Ysidro. When you cross to, to San Antonio, because he saw we we're going to San Antonio, he goes, don't have no, no weed, nothing, dude. Pills, everything. Hey, you so you told us that. Out there, dog. You said that message to George two hours before we hit that checkpoint. Um, it snorted everything? I had, <laughs> yes. Hey, like, like George, hey, George looks at me, and George looks at me and goes, Hey, doc, go throw that in the in the garbage in the bathroom. And so, like, oh. I go, I go to the bathroom and I go, I've never thrown this shit away in my life, and I'm not gonna start. And like oh, man. we got to the checkpoint, and I was, and the cops roll up and they're like, Where are you guys headed? And I'm like, you know, I'm just st- <laughs> 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 and George George wow. has to hit me, he hits me and he goes, Tower, I go. San, San, San Antonio, sir. You know, it was like that. Uh, it's like that scene in Cheech and Chong where they're crossing through the border. They're like a week, a day, a weekday. <laughs> like, <laughs> <today. laughs> yo, Butch. Yeah, I was gonna you ask you like when when you go uh when you do coke out there though, dude, just because it's right there by the border, you know that has, shit hasn't been stepped on or nothing, and it's no, fucking, do a the ball, fucking on, elbowed some on, lightning, some, some you come uh, home, lightning, bro. You come home, and you, you 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 hit that Sean Dizzle shit, and you're like, damn, <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking kill, you're fucking, <laughs> you're fucking, you're killing me, bro. You kill, hey, bro. What are you talking about, dude? It's not good. It's not good for you, bro. Wow, bro. <laughs> it was hot wow, as shit, wow, bro. So oh, you're not gonna some... pay me. No, you're gonna punch me in the face and not pay me. <laughs> what the heck, dude? I, I, I fucking heard die you... with a reference. <laughs> oh my god! No, this no, no this stay says. cool in this fucking hot weather. He was hey, all about hey, Sean Dizzo and that bar-headed bar headed biker chick. Eh? <laughs> I was gonna say real quick before you spoke, Lisa. Was it? He was always about chicks and coke. I got chicks. I got cokes for you guys. Come oh, on, I know. Just, bring, just, bring yeah. just bring them. I was like, all right. I was gonna say is he's a born again Christian now. Was he yeah. battling cancer or some crazy down, shit down in Arizona or something like? Yeah, he's struggling with Banzer. Man, <laughs> that guy, that guy left a mark. That's for sure. I don't know. It was a good mark. <laughs> I, I remember doing shows. You can still see it on that tree. Yeah. Yeah. We were doing shows in San Jose, and like, like he was trying to start start a party, you know, like with the whole like uh, selling point, the chicks and coke. I'm like, I don't do that. Hey, I, yeah, hey, he had glad, shirts that hey. said, uh, like you know, it said the I love McDonald's or like uh, I love coke. Yeah, he had one that said, I love coke. I'm like, this isn't like weed, bro. It's not the same thing. <laughs> you, you can't normalize They don't really want to advertise weed, this. Yeah. public with that shit. Everybody does it, yes. But nobody's yo, public yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 I'm glad I missed the, the, the cocaine tour. Dude, oh, hey, that bro. Was, that's not a fun tour to be on for very yeah, long. No, no yeah, you know I'm what, bro? I missed that one. Uh, <laughs> you know I, what, bro? I, I gained a habit out there. It was that crazy. And it was that, like, bro, I mean, there's so many stories. I could make a whole podcast about how many stories came out of that trip with me and George. You and George I, should bro, do like a Lost Weekend podcast. Like, uh, I remember. Um, I think we should. We were loving in Texas, uh, bro. When I, when I told George about the checkpoint, Cause I, I saw I, I was going to sleep and I saw that photo. You had just posted a photo like forty minutes ago. Uh-huh. I didn't know that. I thought you guys were just crazy, but now I know it was hot. You, got, hey. you, you, got, you and him had no t-shirts on, bro. Oh, yeah, in the house. That's the one in the house, right? Yeah, yeah. dude. Hey, man, cause it was hot and it was like it was crazy hot, and then it was weird, cause like one thing they'd say about the Rio Grande Valley and especially McAllen. Now, at the time, McAllen had the most violence per capita in any city in the country. I know that because my mom told me that before I went there. The year, is that the year it beat out El Paso? What's that? That's the year it beat out El Paso. That's the year it beat out El Paso. And that was because all the drugs coming back and forth. And one Fuck thing they yeah, say bro. that in Rio Grande Valley is they go, you're not, you're not in America and you're not in Mexico. No. I remember that. Bro, they have bro. cops and trucks there like they do in Mexico. They were taking people away like after the club and the clubs. It's like this tiny town, like the size of like Watsonville. And it's got like clubs, bro, like Miami style clubs and shit, dude. And like I was talking to a student out there and she goes, hey, I've been here for four years. Uh, Four years ago, there was not even there was one bank in this town and no clubs. And I mean, these are Vegas style swanky like it felt like little Miami, dude. It was yeah. in McAllen. 
It's yeah, very, yeah, bro. Now it's, it's, a, it's another it, world, it, dog. It has a the daytime is very like Huntington Park, East Side, San Jose, a bunch of Mexicans, right? Paisas yeah. doing their shopping, but at nighttime, it's it, like a, like New Orleans feeling, man. But yeah. a bunch of, a bunch of well, clubs. this girl invited us to her birthday. And so we get there at a house. No, it was at a club. It was at their biggest club and in the back. So it's like an outdoor like area with a courtyard and a stage. And for some reason, the stage has plexiglass in front of the singers. So I kind of am like, oh, wow, this place, this place goes off like, you know, bad. But they had cabanas in the back and that was VIP. And so we roll up. This girl invited us to her party and she introduces. She goes, hey, this guy is throwing the whole party for me. And it was the most blinged out cowboy that I've ever seen in my life, bro. Like he was like bling, bro, like the (laughs) the bling on the belt buckle, the fucking beautiful cowboy hat. And like, I mean, you know what his deal is. Right. And like he's got all his blinged out cowboy homies with him. And at one moment, like we're getting dude, he goes, get as many drinks as he wants on me. Top shelf only, blah, blah, blah. Uh, sitting in this word, and there's this girl arguing with her man in Spanish and like he starts to get mad and he's like he he's like he's into her he's got his hands in her face and he's like and it's looking like bad for a moment and George goes hey bro I don't know if I can let this dude hit this lady and I was like <laughs> I was like and, the cocaine and, talking or is that George talking? this is coming <laughs> from a person that was raised by the most feminist that's, woman ever yeah, okay and my mom guy, uh... my mom goes look when you go she used to tell me this when you go to Mexico if your homies get fucked up by somebody run <laughs> if your homies get that's fucked good, up huh? by I'm, advice. She was like, run. No, and that's good advice because you're not going to survive that. The best thing you could do is run and tell someone else or something or just let his family know they ain't coming back. So, like, uh, Mm. he's like, hey, bro, I don't know. And this dude is another, like, younger, blinged out cowboy. And obviously, you know what these guys are making their money off of. And like he go, and I was like, then we gotta go, bro, because he, he's gonna punch that bitch, and we're gonna end up in the desert, dude, like digging our own holes or some shit, dude. Yeah, like, yeah. That, <laughs> that, it got scary, and then he bounced, and then I bounced, and he ended up like, he comes back, <laughs> he comes back the next day. He's gonna hate me for telling these stories. He goes back like at like one or two in the morning, and he's like, butch, butch. Cause I was boning this this lady, bro, and she's married to this. She's a cop, dude. She's a cop. He goes. Look at her, her man's, she, her man's in prison and he held up these two bottles of cologne. He goes, I got some cologne, homie. <laughs> that's the, that, it goes back to the last part of the cast. Uh, that's Hilarious. the story George told. George told that he stole some cologne, but he didn't tell all that backstory. Yeah, dude. Oh man, that that was like, dude. I mean, it was like the 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 performance at the rib train where everybody was like, it was supposed to start at like eight it didn't start till 11 and then they got bring your own beer and the crowd was ripped bro they were fucking ripped so by the we by the time we got on they were throwing cans at us and yelling at us and then the guy rips me and george off right he rips off us for pay so i go to the dude you know george because he was huge he was like a bigger and buffer mexican than me and like george goes fuck no i'm not gonna fuck with that dude so i go over to the dude right and i go hey bro I'm not I'm not gonna let you rip me off, dude. You owe me some money, dude. And he goes, uh, nah, fuck that, bro. He goes, but I'll I'll tell you what, I'll I'll hook you up with um some hookers and a room and some glow. <laughs> it's fucking Sean Dizzle, dog. And and like, hey bro, because this well, this dude had his hookers working in the bar. <laughs> like they were his hey, waitresses. But that, that's the same amount of money as the old job. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, like, but, that, that, but here's the thing, bro. Um, I'm saying he's gonna get you all the money. Then. That, well, that should be in my <laughs> mind. But you know what? I hadn't had air conditioning uh, for like four days, and I said, you know what? Keep the hookers. I'll take the coke. And I'll take the air conditioned room. And so we go back to the room. Me and Mario Salazar. Mario Salazar. I love that dude. He's lost weight. Shout out. But he was a huge pile back then too. But he was huge. And he had a he had like a coke problem that was crazy, and like so we get in the room, and I'm just I just want to sleep because I haven't slept for four days. And he and he goes and he I got like two grams in this baggie. And he goes, "Hey man, you gonna you gonna fuck with that?" And I go, "No, nah, you know what, bro? Go ahead, you can have it." He dumps the whole thing out on the glass table, 
in the room, chops it up, does the whole thing. Does the big entire big old lines, huh? goes into the huge lines, bro? And he had like a big straw, like already on deck, ready to like that's snort that's him. That's <laughs> that's and he goes game. back. He goes. You got a pile. What do you need a straw for, bro? Bro, he yeah, does the, the paper, whole. The he does the whole thing. Goes into the hallway, grabs a bag of chips, slams the chips, and he's passed out in the bed before I could even go to sleep. I was like, this dude, <laughs> this dude's a professional, bro. Like, he was he out. He passed out on cocaine. He passed out, dog. I'm not even kidding you. The next day, I told that George. big blast, bro. Yeah, because George was gone. He, he met some girl who was partying with her. And the next day, I go, hey, bro, that dude does coke. And, like, two grams, bro, passed out. So like, human body is amazing. Yeah, it's amazing because he was huge. He was so big. I remember what, looking at him laying on the bed. I'm all. I've never seen a human being cover the entire bed with their skin. Like I've never, <laughs> I've never seen that. Like, no. I've never seen that either. No. <laughs> Shout out to Mario Salazar, bro. Hey, I love you, you know, bro. Like God, You're the man. Like the Godfather, huh? Clemenza, huh? <laughs> yeah, he was huge. I think, he's, I think he lost weight. He's sober now. He's dude, he's one of the sweetest guys in the world, man. You know, him and Raymond Ortha run Texas, bro. Like nobody's business. I love those dudes. Yeah, we out should there. get Mario on the podcast because he's got lots of stories about when he, Oh, he has great he stories, somebody, dude. I think he punched somebody in an audience one time. Yeah, he got great but, stories. Look at the one that him. was just told on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got hey, awesome shit. Hey, you got it out. You're gonna, you're gonna run with me, you shit. you might end up on a podcast one day. Cause like I I ain't got nothing to hide. Toby, you know him? Mario? Toby, you worked with uh, Mario before? No, I ain't work with him. I know, I know, I know who he is. Yeah, he's he's a good dude, man. Out there in McAllen. McAllen covered the whole belt. The whole yeah. Bro, bro. <laughs> I worked, a, I worked a, a, another gig that was being booked by um I forgot who oh, by uh by a by a guy that that lives in Corpus Christi, John something. Mm. Mm -mm. John Roman? John Roman. Oh, okay. And he was booking a club called uh, the, the Wild Wild West in Midland, Texas. Odessa. Midland, Odessa. Mm -hmm. And that place, man, like if you if you partied, they took care of you, bro. I, I, that place was, man, the owner, he would just book comedians, but I didn't know what I didn't know what he did in the side. But I just know that that place would be empty all week and he, he paid you in cash and every and night he had a different chick with him laughing and that stuff. And I don't know. He just liked the club for himself, I guess. Yeah. That fool invited me to a dog fight during the after after press. A dog. Fight? A dog fight, like for real. It was like uh, like Michael Vick. Hey, man. Shit. He goes, man, you want to go to the fights? I said, what kind of fights? Knuckle brawls? He goes, no, nah, not tonight. That's some other night. But uh, tonight is <laughs> tonight is um, tonight. Yeah, these fools get behind the farms and they fight, I guess. So um. He goes, yeah, it's a dog fight. Bar. He goes, yeah, man. My friend has a he he has five thousand dollars on his one dog, and I said, no, nah, I'm good, man. See you at the show. And uh, who had a fight? <laughs> but one of his homeboys, one of his homeboys showed up at Fly's show wearing a clans mask. Oh my god! Uh, what? For real? Like so trying Fly to be funny all, or like, like like one night Fly was doing all these jokes about white people and. The next day, the guy that he was messing with, I know the guy. The, the guy always hooks me up with weed, man. The guy I'm talking about, this white dude, this redneck guy. He had like he knew he he knew everything about Odessa, man. He goes, man, he goes, the reason, man, all we do is have meth here and dog fights and all uh -huh. that shit is because you go over there and you could dig six feet, six feet, and you cannot grow shit on that land. And because the land is all fucked up from um, from um, from fracking? drilling oil, from drilling oil in that area. Oh, but that's fracking. Like all the drilling, bro. They do a lot of that shit. Yeah, it's like the, the the ground is full of cement, and you cannot grow shit there, bro. I don't, you can't even grow an apple, bro. Right, right. So that <laughs> fool, he was, so he he sells fucking ecstasy. So that fool lives in a in a part of Texas where. It's, they went on the bottom. Somebody wrote, "Welcome to Clan Town." 
Wow. Oh, yeah. That's like one of the most clan. And fa- I know what you're talking about. I've heard about that place. Clan and family. family it's tradition. Yeah, it's a big. So he goes up to the show and he puts on that clan hood during a fly show. Wow. Damn. That's the type of fool that goes to the Piggly Wiggly with his little clan suit. Hey, huh? bro. <laughs> he, brought That's... he brought it with him or what? Yeah. Like, he did yeah. it. There was going to be a black guy on the show and he wanted to be... No, because Fly was talking shit about him all night during the show. Oh, one... But he had it on him, though, already, right? No, he brought it the next day. He was, he came oh, to every the show. the next day. Oh. Damn. Dang, crazy, dude. Man. That's crazy. Like My daddy's hood. That's like flashing a gun or something. To Pretty me, much. that is. Like, that's a huge threat. That's Bad a threat to me. Bad to me, see. That I've not. That fool, they, that fool get banged How is that a threat to man? you? That's a threat to me. No, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, I, I mean, no, that's what obviously. I'm no, that's no, a threat I'm, to me. No, that's what I'm saying. It's like flat, that's, that's like that's a threat. Fun. That's to whoever yeah. he's showing it to. Obviously, it's somebody who's not white. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm yeah. I'm in the I'm in the body of fly thinking that's a threat to me is what I'm saying. Of course, yeah. yeah. Like, no, yeah. Fly, yeah, so that's threat. crazy. But even still, that's I'm Mexican, scary, bro. Dude. They they don't like, they like you guys way more. They dislike you guys way more than they dislike dislike us. But they're not happy. But still, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, and and the thing we well, out of the neighborhood. I remember being a kid. The only time I ever seen anything like that, I remember being a kid in Gilroy. They used to have clan rallies in Gilroy. He used to have Gilroy? marches. Out in the dude, public? All, yeah, all, up, all kid, up and bro. down California, dude. Yeah. Don't, don't get it twisted, dude. I remember my mom. Garlic or what? My mom pointing yeah. out, and she goes, those people will kill you. Like, that's all she said to me as we drove by. <laughs> <laughs> they will kill you. They will kill you. So I, hey, we had them in Nebraska, yeah. That's true. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's they like were born Huskers. I'd expect we had them. We had them in Nebraska. So Clan hustle. Hey, but you know, you know what he did though. But what he did was like uh, in Nebraska, the farmers. You know, a lot of the white farmers, they were they were Klansmen and racists and all that shit. But then that's what created the vibe of their daughters wanting to get with black men. So now you had this influx of white girls fucking with black men because their father was so racist. The right. guilt, the guilt, brother, the guilt. Yeah, yeah, dude. That's is so that brothers like, was getting brother, brothers was getting pussy just because. Hell yeah, they're getting that dick. <laughs> yeah, and then they found out, you know, the other part. Yeah, they're like, oh um, shit. What are their uh, dicks? If you <laughs> go on, um, if you go to like in Southern California, like Southern California, and you look up, if you like, just by but just by living in Southern California, you can name three cities where you've never seen black people. And and those towns, half of the time, if you look them up, there were sundown towns where black people were not allowed to be roaming the street after midnight. No, after 10 p.m. That's a real after thing they call it sundown towns? Yeah, sundown, sundown towns. Sundown and, uh, yeah. and Gl- yeah, Glendale, yeah. California is one of Glendale. them. Wait, Glendale, what? California was a sundown town. Norwalk, Whittier. Norwalk? Yeah, man. Dude, there's yeah, counties and cities where you couldn't even buy a house. If you you cannot buy a house. Curfew around the around. Sun. Also, Burbank was a sundown town too. No, no way. they still like you that. know you know right there where we go to uh where we go to TJ when we pass by that CHP checkpoint or whatnot. It's right there in Fallbrook. That town right there was home to one of the leaders of the white Aryan resistance. His name was Mike Metzger, dude. They're the ones that started all that shit in 1990. I heard about that dude. Yeah, dude, he he was all dude. They had it on lock, dude. Had a good ass movement going. And then he gets caught in Tijuana, Mexico, coming out of Adelita's, that uh, that gentleman's club or whatever, and the film. And then he lost like three quarters of his following, and it got all all, all messed up. So yeah, dude, this ruins it's it for all, a lot of people. It's bro. Always been, but you know you, the hypocrisy and all that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude, for sure. But it's just like it's crazy that it's right there, dude. It's That's less than five minutes away. One of the driving theaters that we used to go to, I never thought about till now. It was in Norwalk. It was called The Sundown. Oh, Get really? out of here, really? Dude, it all comes from somewhere, dog. Is it the Santa Fe Springs? Yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. But it's crazy, man. Yeah. Like, it's crazy because you I, think I, California wouldn't be that way. You know what I mean? Or like, oh, it's all cool. Every, like, everybody's there. chill. It's yeah, super dude. liberal. It's like, you, you know. Still surfing, bro. No racism here, bro. No, Get out of here, bro. Bullshit. Go to Redding. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, dude. 
Like go to co- hey, there used to be a place where I would go, uh, where my friends grew weed up in like <laughs> near Paradise, and they had like a like right across from my like like you you go back into Paradise like towards like Lake Concow. There's farms out there like they grow a lot of weed out there, but there's like a old Hell's Angel stronghold out there and they have a Aryan Brotherhood group out there. And at night you can hear them like yelling shit and trying to scare everybody in the in the mountains, dude. Like it's crazy, bro. And I was that was the hey, first time I ever ran into anything like that as an adult. You know what's worse than all of that? What? Is that we got one of them motherfuckers in the White House? Fuck Redding. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some motherfuckers in the White House. You talking about Redding, California? We don't give a fuck about them Klansmen. This motherfucker's in the White House. In the White House, yeah. You gotta be sitting worried down, about the power. Sitting yeah. down with Goya beans in front of him. What type of <laughs> hey, you, know what, you know what's crazy about the White House, though? The guy that writes all that stuff, that dude, Stephen Miller, he's it's from like Miller. the back. He's from it's- the Valley, right? And isn't he Jewish? He's Jewish. It's Miller. That's what's crazy to me. Every, every it blows anti, my mind. Anti-LGBT, anti-black, anti-immigrant. Every one of those policies that pops up, it's Miller behind it. He's the architect of it all. I'm really? like, dude, what's up, bro? He's disgusting. Jesus, it's, man. It, it, well, it, you know, and, and that's what that's why I was glad that they painted Black Lives Matter in D.C. and in front yeah. of Trump shit yep. in New York. But now it's enough for that. Fuck the pain. We don't give a fuck about that shit. Don't put it on no more streets. Trump has seen that shit now. For real, uh, man. That motherfucker. Hey, Trump sat there yesterday and said, hey, the police shoot more white people than they kill more oh, white yeah, people. Oh, yeah, he was saying I that. hate the little pussy ass statistics, dog. He, well, that I statistic's mean, such crap because it's like, like yeah, there's, there's only it's just, like, fun, it's just fun with numbers. Yeah, yeah. they're swayed. But, yeah, well, because there's like, like, what is what is the black population in America? What's the percentage? Like eleven percent, thirteen percent. So like, you're taking numbers from like thirteen percent. The 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 rest of that whole like the lion's share of the country. So it's, a black man, a black person is three times more likely. That's the rate. Three times more likely to die at the hands of the cop. Hey, remember I told yes. y'all this shit. Remember I told y'all this people shit. People yeah. Right. Dude, Mexican cops are all super racist too, dog. So come on, that's two in on episode, one. Dog. In episode 299, remember I told y'all. <laughs> when Trump died, Larry Bubbles right here. Right. You got you. Died, Robin, what a love, Tubby. Man. His, his wife is going to fuck a black man. <laughs> Trump, remember I told y'all that on this episode. Her, when hey, once, died, once the presidency is over, she leaves him and gets with oh, Shaq. Yeah. No, she's yeah, going to get with Larry. Just, he just tears yeah. her up. She's gonna yeah. be with bubbles. I'm gonna take off in my Trans Am. Toby, <laughs> Toby, what did you say on the podcast? Two thousand two hundred ninety-three. When what was you it? just said about what's her name gonna will it take be place? With a black guy. What you year will it take place in? Oh no, no, I'm saying this is episode two ninety-nine, right? Yeah. yeah. Remember, I yeah. said that. Hey, when when Trump oh, okay. dies, his wife is gonna be fucking a black man. That she's gonna marry a black man. I already before I, that, dog. Already, before he dies. Already see it coming before he dies. Hopefully, writing that big, no, no, that no, big no, old dick. No, no, no. Hey, because look, and I think I told them. To remember these two things. He might not make it because look, either right now, two things are going to happen in the next within the next year. Either Trump is going to die from the virus, or he is going <laughs> to lose the election and refuse to leave the White House. He's a big like, possibility. That. That's my. I ain't going nowhere. Well, that will so that's my prediction. Quick. That's my prediction is that he will ref- like and you could slow because people are like, he's losing the election. I go, I don't care. He doesn't care that he's losing the election. Yeah, he don't he doesn't care. Up. Obviously, he doesn't care because he's not going to leave. He's going to refuse. And it's not like, you know, we think that they're going to send in soldiers or something or cops and then they're going to cuff them and then they're going to break them out. No, it's going to be a due process. It's going to be red tape. It's going to be like, we need to figure out how to get this guy yeah, out of no. here. And then yeah, by man. then it's going to be too late. I'll be honest hey, with people, you guys. Hey, I think they'll be his ass off. Hey, people the Yankees think that they're going to talk- out of there. They would never I, play. Yeah, the same thing hey, when everybody said we're going to have say, a revolution. What did say? What'd you say? He people knows his renter's rights. Yank him. The day no, of, yeah, you think they'll get out of there? I hope you're right. I hope you're right. So, like, like there's already out there saying, like, you know, the military would be in the dilemma. Do we, yeah. do we support this motherfucker and get him out, or do that we ain't gonna happen? And that's not gonna happen. So, that's the military. Here's now. the one thing I know about the military, and I'm gonna say this because I, I have a close relationship with a lot of military people. 
I, uh, Jamie, he's looking at his phone off. <laughs> yeah, I'm his general. <laughs> I genuinely, well, I just, because I work, I get I get to work, I get the pleasure of working with them a lot. And and the thing is, is that um, I do. It's feel a whole other like, state well, of I've mind over Japan, there, right? I've done Japan. I've done, like, I do a lot of, like, wounded warrior type stuff. Like, I, I work with a, a, a group called Our Heroes Dreams. And let me tell you something about those dudes, man. They do have a lot of them are conservatives and a lot of them support their president because that's their commander in chief. But I will say this, I doubt, and I highly doubt this. And this happened when he tried to get the military to come in. I heard a lot of these guys saying, there's no way we're going to do that. We took an oath. You, these, the one thing I can say about the military, I'm not a war person. I obviously, I live in Berkeley. I'm liberal, but I will say this, man, you can't go and defend your country in a war zone like Afghanistan and not love your country before anybody else. And so I firmly believe that the military will not protect Donald Trump and his regime. Well, you know, no, no. From, yeah. from That's why we have checks and balances, dude. Uh, right. I think I, there are way too many people in this country, even though we get disheartened by seeing the people who mess with the constitution and things like that, but there are way too many people in this country who want to protect the values of the country, who want to protect yeah structure the foundation and the way it works yeah that's Muslim. what you work you yeah. pay taxes you raise well, families all that stuff right. that's the and other thing is enough people how about there. those people that yeah how about those people that stay from reading gilroy the glendale the, the people you're talking about are gonna yeah. say well i'm gonna pack my arms to protect the president if the army isn't <laughs> yeah how are you gonna how are you gonna protect him from glendale well he over there drive for real man what if um the what if uh, the some people think that the Fool, they probably get the Pinkerton security to get him out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go get him, boys. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 fool, the Keystone Cops. Man. Hey, San hey, Jose, look, in Brooks, he's gonna you'll get him out. Is, he's yeah. going to say the election. He's already said Ten no gibs. the election. Oh, he's already. <laughs> Toby, he's Toby's already got, a Toby's <laughs> got a good point. Inside joke. Toby's got a good point. He's already setting it up with the mail-in votes. I don't trust that. The election is yep. going to be rigged. Trust me. Dude. Yep. Yes. Look, yes. He's going to either die or he's going to refuse yeah. to leave. He might Amen. die because you know what? Let me tell you some real shit. Let me tell you some real shit. You can't go around treat. He has cost innocent people their lives. He is sitting there. Every, pr the every president this has. This is that. Well, what I'm saying is, though, no one's ever did it right in front of us more than this motherfucker. With yeah. all this technology oh, yeah. and with all the, the whole world virus. is watching this. <laughs> the whole world is watching this motherfucker mismanage this situation. He's not the first president to mismanage some shit, but he's on a greater level because we all can see it. So it's a global pandemic. Right. Yeah. yeah. Opposed to like Katrina with Bush. And look, <laughs> let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something. You know what's so crazy is that I sold crack for years and I came across a whole was lot like, of Come and catch me. <laughs> Hold on, look. No, I came across a lot of people that lie. When you sell crack, you come across liars. I have never seen for medicine lie. purposes. <laughs> I need some of that medicinal crack for my mom. Sure. <laughs> I thought I had heard every motherfucking lie that could be told. Right. And, right. and this motherfucker takes it to another level. Another every level, bro. Day. So, every day. Like anything that you need, level. you would take it to the next level for. But you want to know some, Toby? I had a crackhead. Let me tell you something. I had a crackhead tell me that their mama died six times. Like I didn't know the fuck better. Right. <laughs> hey, but, man, my mama just he, died. I you want to know something hit, though? Mom was a cat. Yo, you want to know? What's, last month, mother, you want to know what's scarier though? Like, here's the thing: his lies are scary, and because they're obvious. But the thing that makes him so scary is that when you go back, because I have a conservative uh, follow, I have, a, I have like half of my following is conservative people. So I'll go back and I'll go to the people that I talk to, and I'll go, "What? What about this though? What about that?" And Content. Every time you think it's going to be unexcusable or here's a lie that he obviously told, they'll be like, look, here's the thing, man. You're listening to the media again. You need to watch stop watching CNN. And I go, no, no, no. This is a bold faced lie. Here's what. Look, he's in a hard place right now. He's got to say what he has to say to gain the presidency so he can help us out. He's doing this for us. He doesn't need wow. it. And, and they, <laughs> the, the, the cognitive dissonance is crazy.
he's brainwashed his followers though like they, oh and he won't retract anything that he said that was wrong and we so got more cases because we're doing more testing that's yeah, what the like, fuck the problem is yeah, if you and watch those repeated by governors who support him and right people in that state then just believe then nobody wants to wear a mask and nobody thinks it's hey true. but that's why i said he's gonna die of the virus because he didn't he didn't cause <laughs> no. like i'm I'm telling y'all real shit. there's you know what there's something like that what lisa said I'm though y'all there's something that Lisa said. Um, what's that, Butch? So there's there's a there's a Joe Rogan clip that floating around, and it's the guy. Look up Joe Rogan. The name the guy the name of the guy who, who created Dilbert. The name the guy who created Dilbert used to be a hypnotist, and he talks to Joe about this. And he and because Joe goes, "Hey, I heard you're a fan of Donald Trump. What's up with that?" He goes, "Not really, but from a hypnotizer standpoint." I've He's said this amazing. since day one. And he does exactly what hypnotists do. And he he'll do short it. phrases and he'll repeat them and he'll say them in different ways. Yep. And- Have you guys seen him on stage at his rallies? He's, He's good. killing <laughs> it, dude. Killing. He kills it, dude. And but then he's dude. In, the, in people's brains and they cannot. Yeah, he's in their heads. Other he's information. Certainly in their heads. Dude, you know he's who like his, Mercado, man. You know who his teacher was, right? Roy Cohen. Mm-hmm. Like, Who's dude. That? Is an attorney that like met, met back in the day, like a talented dude, dude. But like, there's a whole story coming out on him on uh, HBO, his whole like life because he never came out of the closet or whatever. But if you look at all the way how he is and how he does what the fuck he does, he took what his dad had to the next level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's wow. and that's all that shit. Book. Like, like the whole thing. You you don't up. shake hands with poor people. You wear a glove real quick and then go. There's all right, a, throw, throw there's, it away. A, there's a Twilight Zone episode. I don't know if you want to look for it. And there's a guy speaking. At a rally, and he pretty much saying exactly what um, President Trump was saying during the election about America first. He was this guy. I seen that episode. It's like an American socialist episode, and he's like saying exactly what Trump was saying during the election. And then there's another movie that came out later in the '80s, and there's the same guy speaking the way exactly like Mr. President Trump, and he that guy in that movie. Was the first guy to say "Make America Great Again" in that movie? Really, really. And then, that, and then oh, that guy, you're talking about that, Bob Roberts. Bob Roberts. Yeah, yes. Bob Roberts. Yeah. And that goes back to what Butch is talking about—that whole hypnotized yeah. type of speech. And you like get people, you bring them in, bro. Well, that's what the guy was saying. He goes, "Look, he goes, he is doing textbook hypnotizing to his audience because we think hypnotize hypnot, hypnotists are like these." Uh, esoteric, like, um, like, kind of like a supernatural thing that happens to you. It's like, no, it's a, it, it's a, it's a series of words or actions that that oh, trigger the brain man. into a different direction. And, yeah, and and I mean, have you ever seen a hypnotist at the fair like hypnotize a whole crowd? It's it has a beginning and the end. Hey, dude, world, right. world, man. Look, let me tell Once you something. People believe- That's why it's only a couple black people here at a time, because <laughs> niggas, we ain't with that. I'll tell you where it hypnotizes. Well, it doesn't make sense. Toby, I'll Toby, tell you what. Toby, what do you think about those time conservative black twin comedians? Oh, the Hodge twins. The Hodge twins, yeah, disgusting, bro. I hate those guys. I used to be a fan. I don't know that. Those fools look like they have those eyes. They should have came with the hair and the skin, and they look mad, dog. Right? (laughs) (laughs) That's what it looks like to me, dog. Yeah, Hodge twins are conservative. I didn't know. Oh, all of a sudden, like Trump supporters, they're huge Trump supporters. They're they're like those uh, like Owen Benjamin. I didn't even know they were political. Or... Worse, bro. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah, they're bad. They got they bumped too many times by Scruncho. <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, it, it it funny, is... man, like um, um, uh, Gary Owens had an interview. Um, I posted on Twitter where he breaks down that white Trump won. And uh, he mentioned a book about how um, the poor of the poor and white dude Always wants someone to blame, you know. They're never going to blame their situation on themselves. Of course so not. So these politicians always throw in, well, the immigrants, and they throw in this, China, and then they, 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 they fucking live that. They believe that shit, okay? And, yeah, it, it ain't that company that moved to China. It's China. Yeah. It's like right. that's, that's, that book, that's, that's what his niece is saying in the book. She's saying that he never Lisa, had to take- he never had yeah. to do, you know, he never had to take accountability for anything in his life. 
She was Never. telling how fucked up her grandfather was. She said that's why Trump is the way he is because of his father, and that's her grandfather. And she's a psychologist. And the way I know she ain't lying, she explained the shit perfectly. She's a, she she's the daughter of the oldest brother that was a pilot. And the day oh, that the brother yeah. died, they had a brother that was a, a cerebral. Jr. He had cerebral palsy. Fred and then Jr. when her, his brother died, he took him off the insurance policy. I, I, like I mean, cold I, shit. I'm, really, I'm, I'm listening to that Bolton book. John Bolton. Uh, audio. John Bolton. Michael Bolton. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that John, <laughs> that, that, uh, John Bolton <laughs> says, and like, Bolton. That, the way that uh, <laughs> the president works, he goes, he goes in the book, he goes, I've been trying to get a meeting with Mr. President Trump for weeks. And when I finally get the meeting, first thing he says is, hey, Bolton, did you call this meeting or I'll call this meeting? Mr. President, I call this meeting. <laughs> oh, good, because I've been trying to, I, I was looking for you for this meeting. So right there, he manipulated or made everybody think that yeah. it was a Trump meeting all along, that he was looking for Bolton. And, and then everybody on the side just agreed. Bro, well, yeah. Classic narcissist, dog. Come on. Bolton yeah. was avoiding him all along. And, and Bolton has experience. I don't agree with everything he does, but he has experience. He's one of those last old conservative, like, let's take care of China before they fucking kill us type motherfuckers. I'm, I'm not a, yeah, I'm not a Bolton fan either. But, you know, the thing is, is right now is like, Bolton is the warmongering monger in the warmongering totally. world. Okay, he is the ready to drop bombs. He, he's why we went to war in after nine eleven. He is like he he's like dude. He's not a good dude. And when you have a dude like that who is like fuck this guy, like yeah. that's how bad <laughs> it is. Well, the generals too, even before him. And so it's like you're looking at this dude. This fool's a fucking lunatic, dog. Yeah, he's. He's, uh, he's, uh, I mean, dude, here's the other thing, man. General Mattis. He's the reason they don't bomb Redding. General <laughs> Mattis is, uh, Bob Brook. General Mattis is, is, I think he's, I'm pretty sure he's a conservative. Uh, he's, he is like the, uh, military god to military people. He knows well, his reach, he knows his responsibility, and he won't speak. He's not, he, that's the one thing about him is that he's, he won't, he, he doesn't ever speak out. Military he, to the core, bro. He got out of his seat to speak out what a month ago to say mm. something. He wrote something, a letter, because it was it's getting that bad. I mean, when General Mad Dog Mattis is saying something, it's bad, dude. Because they're out in the field, dude. Those guys don't they, say anything ever, and they never speak. They to know what's cracking. Yeah. He is well, a yeah, master. Yeah. General Mattis is a master military person. Like he, meaning like he is. He's my hero, eh? He, he, dude, he's <laughs> mine too, and and it's because he's straight up like I'm an operator, not a policy maker. Like I, and that is like, you know, like he sticks to the military stuff. Bro. Let's look at the intelligence report. And, and Let's he, execute. He respects the chain of command more than anybody. Obviously, it's because he's there, but also he's totally. he's like he's war hardened. He's actually been to war. He's not just a suit. He spoke out. That says a lot, man. That tells, like, that's the thing is, that's how he's saying this guy's division of us is is this scary, and yet we're all still sitting here like, everybody, oh, oh, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> let's hey, see what happens. Paul spoke out. Yeah, Bowen man. Paul spoke out. Everybody spoke. Yeah, out. it's crazy. But we're all sitting here. Like, let's see what happens at the election, and it's like I'm telling you right now, he ain't going nowhere. Has there been? Yeah, I, I agree. Huh? Has there been uh, an election? What? What? That he's going to get elected again? I, I, I think so as Ooh. well. I, don't, I hope not. No, I don't think he's going to get elected. I just don't think he's going to leave. No, I what, think. Were you, were you asking again. Lisa? I was uh, asking if you guys can recall, or if you know, if there was any election where the incumbent, the sitting president, had. Not one, but two groups of the same party who are campaigning against them. Not with a candidate, but they're campaigning for the Democrat. Right. You know, the Lincoln Project, they're pushing. Yes. Yeah. Oh my they, God, believe in the they believe in the Constitution and they believe Trump is fucking with the Constitution so badly that they're willing to put their money behind Biden, who they don't agree with 100%. Right. Uh, but they believe he's better for the country. Than Trump. Have you seen their Trump, commercials? Like Trump is the kind of president. If, huh? Like if Trump was a comedian, and now uh, you're checking into your condo, he'll still be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, let me do five minutes, buddy. 
I may be wrong. Fucking but squatter, I, bro. In the last 30 years since I've been voting, I don't remember that happening. He's Steve no. Trevino. I don't <laughs> You're stupid, dog. Hey, I bro. Don't think, bro. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Steve Trevino you... stayed like three extra days at the at the La Jolla condo. Uh, uh, well, when me and Edwin showed up, he was still there chilling. His dog attacked me. We were like, "What are you leaving?" And then he brought his friends over. I would have threw that dog in the ocean, dog. Extended stay. I hate that yeah. dog. Hey, Butch, I, I was gonna I, ask you. Oh, sorry. There, there was uh, there might be a president before that uh, was attacked by both sides, but um. They made him a vice president, though. Roosevelt, Ooh. I think Roosevelt. Well, Roosevelt went to another. His he started his own party, the Bull yeah, Roosevelt party. Roosevelt was yeah. was, a, was he was against the he was he was going to take all those companies to court, um, Rockefellers and all that, yeah. and the, the, the both sides went against Bull him. Moose. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I uh, saw that now. The men that built America. The men that built America is one of the best things on TV. It's on the History History Channel, right, babe? Yeah. Yeah. History Channel. Uh, I'm gonna check it out. You've seen a couple of episodes on the road. Hey, Bush. You can, watch, you can watch it on whatever Hulu, whoever shows History Channel stuff. Bush. Yeah. Yo. Oh, but getting back to what you're talking about, you know, like you, you said you had conservative friends, and then you lost some. You lost some. Even now, I'm not saying you know you're always right, but most of the time these fools are always wrong. But right. um, when you show them the the facts. They still don't believe you, huh? No, no. I mean, they like Lisa had an argument with one of her aunts, and I had an argument with a woman I grew up with. Because remember when they said, well, I'll bring it up again, but when they brought up when that story, when um, Denver came legally as marijuana, and they said that eight people died of overdose of marijuana. Oh my God. It's like fake, fake news. Fake news. How many pages? It was like the, the or it was like a, the, the onion. onion, bro. The onion. It was the comedy page, and this girl posted it up. Marijuana is bad. And then I told her, you know, that's a comedy page. Right. You know, the president retweeted a comedy page. The president she retweeted said, no, an, onion, an they, onion article thinking it was real. She the said, I'm going to leave it up there because it might happen. It could happen. Hey, that's what it they that's what they say. So if you show them that they're both faced wrong and then you show them the evidence in a meme, because you have to post it in a meme. Um, <laughs> they go, <laughs> totally. Dude. Well, you know why I'm leaving this up here? I'm going to leave this up here. I'm gonna leave this up here so now everybody could read what we did and they'll see the truth. And yeah. then and so this is you know, this is how we get the truth out hey, of Hey man, I'm not even talking to nobody. <laughs> you talking about you can OD on weed. I'm not arguing with a motherfucker like well, that. I'm a dial <laughs> 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 Hey, you know those are those are flat hey, earthers. Flat earth flat Ooh, footers. Those are a Oh I'm yeah. Not even having a conversation <laughs> with a motherfucker about you really, me. You really can't. You're not on the same wavelength, really, at all. <laughs> I'm not no. gonna talk about that. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like, oh, uh, if you ever that had a but that chick is all about blue lives matter all day long, twenty four seven. I wonder yeah. how she's doing now that Weezar is uh, er, er, went to jail and uh, is now gonna go under trial or go on trial for that. It's we have a go fund me for his law to help him out. So the the the, the word the word, the word that we're looking for is called cognitive dissonance. Yeah, it's cognitive dissonance all the way. And it's and there. And it's people that go that no matter what you say to them that makes sense, their beliefs or their 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 indignations override that um that like whatever you just told them. And so when you go like because there's a person, there's a lady that I met through Felipe, actually, who's um, a real you know, lady. I, I like her because she will she'll message me and we always have spirited conversations. She's she's a conservative. Uh -huh. um, yeah, yeah. And there's no unfriending. There's no there's no uh, hostility like you instead of a whatever. Uh, <laughs> but but I'll present her something. And I think she does the same with me. And and I and and she'll and I'll see how she shoes it away, you know, um, and and it's weird to see how they do that, how they just like, oh, well, here's here's my re here's the reasoning for that. And and even when it's a lie and it's in their face, it is the cognitive dissonance that kicks in and makes them go. 
you know, um, he's under a lot of pressure or <laughs> this is, what would you say? And like, yeah, everybody's against him. Of course, he's going to he's going to lash out and say those things. And it's like, yeah, hey, but man, it's all hey, man, hey, look, this man is for Confederate monument. Yep. Against yeah, mask. Yes, he is. Fuck his motherfucking. <laughs> I think he finally I'm, wore a mask, right? I'm with you, brother. I think I'm with we you. We all agree, Toby. <laughs> we yeah. with you. Yeah, dude. I I hate. I've never. I don't normally hate people. I, I barely hate people I know. Uh, and I and I reserve hate and evil for special uh people. Uh, I got about two. But um, be around Bobby. <laughs> be around Bobby. Uh, Justin I like seventeen. Uh, uh, like uh, you know, like certain people in okay. this world that I just go, that is an evil person, and and I barely, I've never said this about anybody I don't know, but I look wow, at that bro. dude and I go, he is so <laughs> evil. He's a bad. He's out of touch with reality, bro. Yeah, yeah. He's he is, and it's uh, that's that's pure hatred and evil in that man. Because he didn't earn his way in life. Because he didn't earn one thing. Rizzo, you all right school. over there? <laughs> yeah, I'm just chilling right like, now. <laughs> you, you look like you jacking off. I mean, like... Hey, oh, yeah. hey what toenails. happens below Set the camera stays below the, the camera, bro. Oh, I'm wearing shorts. I'm wearing shorts. I was ready to fire off, huh? Yo, Butch, I was going to ask you. I know you're all... <laughs> no, it's over, you know, law enforcement and all that shit. Uh, you were telling us a story that uh, when we did a Perico Productions gig with Felipe... Yeah. Uh, Back in a Visalia, you're telling us a story a about before. Gig, though. We, we, Hell we, yeah. We, we had Mexican food. That was a so rad gig, that, bro. That, uh, that Perico was getting that shit for free. Hey, and, a, and, yeah. and you did a meeting greet, fool. Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, my man out there at Perico Productions <laughs> hustles, bro. But uh, yeah, oh, dude. Bro, I, I, I always have fun over there. That meeting greet is the payment for the food at the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. Felipe paid him. <laughs> God damn, fool. Damn. Be laundering money over here, relative. Yeah. Damn. So what story were you saying? No, that you were, before you did stand-up comedy, that you wanted to be a, like a correctional officer yeah. or something, but you got a DUI, dog. I got, hired, I got hired by Oakland PD and Shut the up, Department fool. of Correction on the same day. I got letters on the same day. Except <laughs> Bro, because I went and got my record expunged. Like I, like I'd been to jail, bro. I had problems. Like it was, <laughs> and like I went and got it. I got a lawyer. I got it expunged. I worked my way through the system. That's I got, the way to do it. I, I, I passed all the tests and exams. I got post certified. I was ready to go, and they hired me. And uh, so I decided to go get drunk and party. <laughs> and I lived, I lived five blocks from where I was partying, but I decided to drive anyway. Drove down Damn. the road. Drove down the wrong way, on a one way, got pulled over by San Jose State Police Department, Damn. college cops, and I got a DUI. And so I had to call my recruiters, let them know. They threw the book at you. They threw the book at me, and I would best thing that ever happened to me, bro. Best thing that ever happened to me because I wouldn't be a comic. I wouldn't be sitting here with you guys. I'd be you in jail. Right now. Imagine you're like a you're a sergeant or some shit. You're a no, dick. I mean, no, I'd be man. I'd be in hey, prison you know for what? corruption charges. <laughs> you know, you know like what? there's no. Hey, you got cut to the ham, bro. To I'd be getting blowjobs yeah. from hookers and my fucking you know, what? you know what I mean, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, dude. <laughs> Like I'd be oh, doing yeah. dirty shit, bro. I'd be like, uh, I'd be like, Butch, we need to Butch, test this Butch, coke. Butch, Butch. <laughs> hey, Toby, what up, Toby? Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> said slow down. Hold on, look, man. Oh god, yeah. See, that was a fucked up move. Anyway, thinking you could ever do a job like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, funny. dog? I totally you agree with you, Toby. Anybody, anybody. I mean, hold on. This is before all this bullshit happened. A motherfucker <laughs> should have never wanted to be the police. Never in their motherfucking life. I kind of want to be a cop. Even... Toby, yeah, you know. Toby. <laughs> you never <laughs> saw Beverly Hills hold Cop. Up. You wanted to be a cop? I know, Toby. dog. <laughs> look, 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 Training day, dog. One time, one time, right? <laughs> Right, one time we was at my homeboy house. So, so we back back <laughs> he with the villains. Hold on, look back when I was hustling, right? So, wow, back in the days in San Diego, we had my boy's house, and now it's like 20 people there. We playing dominoes, we shooting dice, we smoking weed, we drinking, 
and one of the homies, fire. now this homie, this homie, he grew up with all these cats. He wanted you know, to be a bop. Or the big bopper? <laughs> Ooh, like a blood cop. The boys in red. We're the boys in red, baby. So he grew up. He grew up with uh, mostly everybody there. So everybody's doing their thing, smoking and drinking. And all of a sudden, he said, "Hey, man, I just want to let y'all know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm about to go to the police academy." And all of a sudden, everything stopped. My homeboy, who house it was, he turned the music off. Record scratch. The bloods went out. Everything stopped. And my homeboy, now they had grew up with each other. He was like, motherfucker, you're going to be the Ooh, piece stop of fucking. motherfucking shit. Get the fuck out my house right now. And they had been knowing each other their whole life. And we was in tears. But I mean, like, it was some serious shit, like. You guys are in tears? If, if I was that full, I would be y'all under citizen's arrest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Surprise! You know Put your hands hey, behind your back. Hey, hey motherfucker, he was quit working with deep bubber. To this day, people don't, he never, he didn't even become a police, but people quit fucking with him acting. Damn. I mean, yeah. Nigga, you we make some new friends. Out the house. We smoking weed, it's cocaine in the house, we making money, everybody's a dope dealer, and you gonna say you gonna be the police? Y'all should have gave him a job. Man, a gangster got dreams too. <laughs> Toby, Toby Hicks. Toby Hicks. Have you have you guys on a dope dealer podcast talked about entanglement yet? That's that's tomorrow. <laughs> Butch, do you know about that, Butch? About hey, what? That, that he was, was with Jada Pinkett. Will Smith huh? and Jada Pinkett. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, have you that, ever entangled? Have you seen the meme where uh, it's a picture of Jada from uh, Menace to Society with the little kid uh, sitting on her lap? Not like, yet. Jada in August. Like, Hilarious. Like, dog, 19, dog. whatever. Hey, look. Hey, look. The funniest one I've seen with that was I seen you guys seen the uh, one with OJ Simpson? And he yeah. says... My wife was in an entanglement once. <laughs> Only one. <laughs> that shit was funny as fuck. That's you know, funny. You said Only one. That's just funny as fuck. <laughs> yeah, he, one that, that shit the killed that, me there. The one that I thought was funny was uh, he, ha he has a crime face and he gets that the light flash from uh, Men in Black so he can forget shit. Oh. <laughs> the good one. <laughs> yeah. so one that, uh, you, know the, you know those little things exist, dog. Yeah, oh, that's you know, I'm not really understanding why they did that shit. I really, I really didn't understand. Like, whatever y'all do is y'all business. Y'all didn't have to explain shit to nobody, but that shit just came across looking very foul and it just, it just. I mean, that just didn't look good. I didn't like that. I think that, uh, I think that they I came like out it. with it because people were talking about it and they felt like the truth was really going to come out, and they just wanted to. Do a preemptive strike. Hey, well, look, Jada should have came out and told the truth. I, Will I didn't have to be you. there. I know. Why did I Will know. have to take the brunt of it? That's I didn't know. Will that didn't have to be so there. Yeah. Fuck all that shit. You Somebody has to be the like bigger man. man. I'd have been like, did you explain that shit on your own? <laughs> you can go. see he's not over it yet. They still have not really gotten over that. How can you be? I'm How sorry. I like to hear the sorry. arguments at that house. I'm sorry. Yeah, How can you, know. you be okay with that, dude? That it's you can't the, the, really call it be okay with it, but you could deal with it as a couple. But you know, you're not okay with it, and he's still not okay. But the the thing that she's doing when she uses that word entanglement, I'm so happy to see this. Unfortunately, I'm happy to see it because Jada has always put herself on this fucking pedestal. Yep. Give us some, give us yep. some Jada yeah. Pinkett. Yep. <laughs> I'm, that, I'm, that's I'm, Jada, though, Lisa. I have not been working on my my impression lately, but I I agree with you, Lisa. But she she's uh, it drives me crazy how self righteous she is, and then to use the word entanglement right in front of his face. Three times, and she couldn't admit what it was. It was an affair. You went outside your marriage, whatever. We wrote a That's whatever. the thing is that see that shows how knows how much she knew it was wrong because she wasn't. Of course, willing. she's trying to hide no. it because she doesn't want herself to look bad. That is Jada's. Were they? Were they? She's a hypnotizer. And and she she's is. whitewashing the whole thing. She's just like sugarcoating it, and it's it's hard to watch. <laughs> uh, hypnotizing. I, I hate when um. 
I'm going to predict interview? they're going to. I think they're going to be divorced by in the next six months. I, I I'm with you on that. I wouldn't take that. I think it's, that. it's this was the knife in the back. This is a well. Knife. He didn't had some probably some entanglements too. So oh, you know, I don't think from the Suicide Squad, it. right? Yeah. I don't think I don't think he did. Honestly, I don't think he did. After, it's possible, but when remember when she was talking about their open, an arrangement, open relationship, but whatever, <laughs> you know. I can't make you happy. You can't make me happy. We have to find happiness on our own, blah, blah, blah. Well, when she was talking about all that stuff. She's got a hall pass. That's some gay shit. She was shit. talking about all that stuff. She said, they, they asked, had Will ever been uh, unfaithful? And she her words were that uh, there have been so many more betrayals worse than sexual infidelity. I think she wanted to be a man in black and told her now. Nah. I think that it was a career <laughs> thing. I think there's an ego thing. She had to sit back and be the mom. She basically said no. Life, and something happened with her career and it hurt her because that's when she started that band, right? So basically she said, she said, said no. Not, uh, she's another yeah. band. She has yeah. a metal band, fool. Fuck, the no, fuck the, up, dog. You think I'm lying to you, fool? The drummer from Fishbone, he's in her metal band. Look it up after the podcast. You're going to trip out. She's, t- dude, she was on Ozfest, fool. Your next birthday, I'm going to give you the bad the t-shirt. I'll, I'll admit, when, I'm a, when I'm she a talks, I... when Jada Pinkett talks, she does this. Was she throwing metal signs like that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know. Ooh, you she know said she was shit. an Iron Maiden fan. She was with a little girl. <laughs> and you know she was in Baltimore. The house. I was at Juilliard playing Iron Maiden. And they didn't believe me. You know shit is fucked up at the house. When a black bitch talking about she's in the metal music. <laughs> I missed it. You're <laughs> fucking kill me, dog. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Say it, say, it, say it again, Toby, because One more know. time, dog. <laughs> say it again. How are we talking about a black bitch in metal music? <laughs> that bitch has lost her mind. Listen, bro, she she used to be in a goth band. They were called the Smiths. <laughs> they, they were called the Pink. They were called the Pink and Smiths. That's Pink hilarious. Smiths. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about she was at Slayer's first gig. <laughs> Two in the pinky, oh one in the hey, hey, right now, Tupac is. Tupac is laying on his face in his grave. He then turned over. Yeah. <laughs> he was talking about like if I would have got killed, I would have done a metal album. Full um, <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is that um is that a tweet to Will Smith from Fifty Cent real or fake? Oh, the, say the I, the it. I don't but know. That, um, yeah, what was the tweet? I don't know how. Hey man, that you know, man, you 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 really um you really strong or something like that about putting up with that shit. And he goes, thanks, man, whatever. And then 50 says, man, how you gonna let another man break your woman's back like that? He says, fuck you, 50. You know, he goes, what? How you, gonna, how you gonna let another man pull your pull your, your wife's back spine like that? Oh, yeah, that's true. Talking I can about. tell you right there, that's the truth, because that's nigga shit. That's shit we say. So, yeah, yeah I agree. You turn her that. over with oh, a broken yeah. back. <laughs> pull her back out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Dang. what we say. Uh, he he broke you it back. Uh, you let the nigga then blow. He then blew her motherfucking back out. That's that's that's. Like, that's <laughs> she came say. back to the house in a wheelchair. Man, all that, all that. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm Corey Holcomb. Right 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 when Will Smith, <laughs> yeah, bro. When Will Smith was listening to Jada Pinkett Smith, I kept thinking to myself, "Well, I guess he never read." Yeah, that's Iceberg a Slim. That is a real. I'm I'm looking it up right now. That is a real tweet. That is definitely a real tweet. Hey Bush, wow. can you read it to us. Bush, read it to us. Okay. Wow, dog. Uh, yo, Will, you all right over there? Yes, I'm cool. I appreciate your concern, my brother. But why she tell you that shit on a on a show for everybody to see? We broke up, so she did her and I did me. Then she said. She, only she can give permission for somebody to blow her back out. <laughs> Fuck you, 50. Yeah. What I do. <laughs> what, said, what I, I do. do. <laughs> That's a t-shirt, dog. What I do. 
She said, then she said, then she said only she can give permission for somebody to blow her back out. Oh, my God. He roasted him, bro. Wow. And then he straight up. What's that food food podcast, Doc? <laughs> hey, hey, but look at it had to be said though. Like for real, I love I love Will Smith. I'm I don't a know. Will Smith That's fan. nuts, bro. But no, hey, 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 look. Let's look at it the other way. Can you imagine if Willow, his daughter, brought one of her girlfriends over? Who said Willow? Like, over age. <laughs> I mean, uh, over age because she's a, she's a grown woman. But let's say she brought her friend over and Will fucked her. Can you imagine how uh, it would be, it would be over, man? It'd be Hell over, no. man. I mean, how about if a Will Smith's son brought Michael, my magic son? And then he fucked magic back. Son magic has son has HIV. HIV. <laughs> <laughs> well, anybody who bring magic son on some bullshit. Yo, anybody this is my fucking bring- here with a purse, dog. I don't even know what I said, but yeah. You're kidding me, dog. Can y'all, imagine, me, dog. can y'all imagine if this shit was turned the other way around and Will was fucking a, a 27-year-old girl? Oh. That's I'm practically not, her I'm, father. I'm not tripping out a fucking bush, smoking that big-ass pipe, looking like a circus strongman over there. <laughs> my weed. I think my, my weed. To the hey, bro, because I'll tell you why. Because when you got this in your car and you're just driving down the road, and they don't you know, think about the bud. No, nope. hey. it just looks like I look like an old. I'm trying to be an old well, hipster. Some cartoon hey. while I was driving a car. to the gut. I'm a strong man. Dang, Lisa. Hey. I ain't hey. seen Bush, a motherfucker. I ain't seen a motherfucker smoke out of one of them pipes since I was a kid. Man, My grandpa does. Hey, man. No, I, I, was, I, I ordered this. I ordered this on Amazon. What's uh, up, That was on the last coming standing tour. These fucking cool ass redneck dudes from Flint gave me like a quarter of weed, and I had no 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 papers, no fucking pipe. I went into a pipe, a, a, a smoke shop, and I bought one of those pipes, but it had like a little corn husk in the middle. No, I, I know yeah, we those corn are emergency cup, corn pipe. pipe. Yeah, yeah, we got dude. one of those here too. A little husk. I was gonna say that uh, Butch is right there with that pipe in his study, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing homies. is. I don't because you know that's the thing is like I have my like chill weed pipe, but this is like my online like so it doesn't like you know I, mean, I don't I don't, I don't know what your monetization rules are for YouTube you know and you're like, <laughs> you got this guy up here smoking weed doing drugs oh, yeah. with like a like a like a black dude with a big dick behind him you know what I mean like I'm, <laughs> I'm not trying to get anybody hey, hey, in, hey, not hey, trying to get black, anybody in trouble hey, here the black guy with a big dick is cool but that fucking pipe put it away dog yeah. <laughs> the guy's a legend behind you bro. Oh, I was gonna fuck about the pipe. That black dude with the big dick behind you. That's wood, pop. fool. That's wood, bro. Hell yeah. yeah. You, don't, yeah. you, gotta, you, you gotta, know the story behind that, fool? It's a great story. Yeah. Go for it, Crazy. Rodrigo. Nah, dog, I'm good. Uh, yeah, it's a good story, though. It's, it's you can look story. it up on Vice.com. Just look it up. It's got a whole... Li- this thing has... This, this, by the way, is the flag of 2020 right here. That's what dude, I'm doing. Rest in peace to him, dude. That guy yeah, is rest bro. in peace to Wood. That's why I am I got it up there. He's from the Bay, bro. I, yeah, like, dog. That's, that's yeah, crazy. Dude. Ex-pro hey. football player, bro. Right. That was crazy. He did fucking gay porn, too, so he shredded guys' buttholes up, dude. Yeah, he did, bro. With that thing, like, because we look at the real big... <laughs> like, like, there's a block behind... There's a block... Like, if there's I get up to go to the bathroom or something, it's not like it's going to, like, flop ah. out. Like there's a that, that brings me back to my wormhole, bro. <laughs> Full circle. Speaking of that fool, get there's a documentary. I don't know. I was watching now. Uh, I was yeah. watching nonstop um documentaries of fucking um that one dude from American Me, um Rudy, I don't know his name. But uh, there were a bunch of prison documentaries. Oh, you dude. I, I landed on one. That is by, by fucking um by Danny Trejo and the documentary is called How to Turn a Motherfucker Out in Prison and I said fuck it let's watch this and I'm bored, th- this huh? dude he's giving me the play by play about him about to rape somebody he goes, <laughs> so what I do he goes, what? what I do is I, I tell that motherfucker put you your hands down on. and I tell him you gotta put put your two fingers and put this um Vaseline on your fingers. And now uh, loosen your butthole. He got some old con that turned me out, told me that, you know, if you put a little bit of va- a Vaseline on your fingers, he can't yell out rape because he already has wax on his finger. 
So this group goes, goes, yeah, man, I wanted to make love hey, to man, him. I really liked him. <laughs> I wanted to make love to him. Blood came out, blood. homie. Yeah. Hey, bro. I had no idea going here. I told me blood to come out, bro. bro Keep going, though. In the documentary, all these fools go back and go, yeah, they are married now. Yeah, we <laughs> married. With family. <laughs> but for real, man, this will stand out. He Got a said, dog um, he goes, he goes, my homie and I, we turned him out all two, we, we took, we took like three turns for the first time I didn't finish. And he was going too hard. Hey, hey, man, slow down, man. We can't make this guy go to the infirmary and shit. Fuck. So they helped each other out. Fuck. <laughs> hey, fool. Oh, hey, I couldn't man. sleep all night, dog. Hey, I was like, hey, I'm hey, not going to sleep man. all night, dude. Hey, were those Latino hey, fools or what were they? They're from the South, bro, from the South. I think all you have to uh, do on, for, instead of, Antarctic of that scare, instead of that straight show. Look, I thought we didn't do that shit, though. Just tell that story, bro. If you uh, want to scare motherfuckers <laughs> from going to prison, tell yeah. that it's story. Real. Fuck, I heard that shit happened in jail, too, dog. <laughs> hey, but look, man. County in jail? Oh, no. But County. Emilio, Emilio Rivera has that one joke that he went to jail for one day. And he goes, man, my wife left me. I looked around. My friend was having sex with somebody. I looked over. What are you doing, homie? Hard times, eh? Bro, we're only here for the weekend, dog. <laughs> Hard time, huh? Toby, Toby, in prison, did you ever have that fear? Were you ever... A I ran that place. No, were no, you in, no. You know why? You were, you were, were you in maximum security? for? I didn't been in every situation yeah. you could be in, in incarcerated. Never had any sort of... Thing is that, no, because you know what? Those type of people know who to fuck with and who right. not to fuck with. Right. Anybody who gets caught up in a twist like that, that's because they want it. Entanglement, to you mean? Entanglement. <laughs> Entanglement. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. All the comments that's on the cool. bottom after that guy said that about the Vasily, he said, man, if somebody offered me a soup, I'm going to say no. No, and the, and the thing is, is that you gotta say no, though, dog. I own a hundred soups. Hey, but look, uh, the comments are so good. Right them, now, dude. And, they know, and they know they people know in that situation who the fuck would like that. They ain't gonna come at no right. real motherfucker like that. That that ain't gonna happen. I was a littlest motherfucker there, and you know, in every prison I went to, obviously I was damn near the littlest motherfucker. Oh. We lost him. Robin, Robin? Can't hear you. We lost him. Boy, he's really passionate about something. Oh, uh, this is gone. This is good. Wait, wait, Toby, you cut out. Beat your ass. Wait, you cut <laughs> out right now. The whole thing you were saying. You, you, you cut off when you were pressing the headphones. Bro. The headphones. You cut <laughs> off at the good right. part, dude. We're going like this. Yeah, your headphones. I think need to get recharged. Tell it again. You cut off. You cut up when you were saying you were fi- you were fighting two fools off you. Yeah, you were doing stuff like this. Now, can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, 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 say yeah. it again. That story. Okay, so yeah, I was in prison. I was gambling. We playing dominoes, and a motherfucker go. This big motherfucker get mad because I'm slamming dominoes. I'm talking shit. He's like, "Yo, look, man, I'm gonna fuck you up, you little skinny ass bastard. You better shut the fuck up." He called me a bastard. And you know what I did? I looked at him, and I said, "Hey, look, man." You got to be here a while, and I got to be here a while. You fuck with me, you better not ever go to sleep. <laughs> and once I said oh. that, motherfuckers, then nobody fuck with me. They like, that skinny motherfucker crazy. Don't fuck with me. When, you know what? Hey, bro, I was like, like Cody about this, this fool, dog. You got to put this shit out there. Hey, when I, when I was a bouncer and a little dude would talk to me that way, I never... I was like, damn, that's like that dude, that's coming from somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, it was yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They know, they, they know. They don't know fuck them. with that dude. You know what I mean? Because, like, because hey, that's I the never, thing. I've never man. had a problem. But, I, but, I, but the real shit on prison is that, you know what? Anybody who gets fucked in prison, in most cases, like 95% of the cases, now there are some crazy folks that might just grab somebody and rape them. I'm not saying that they don't have some cheeks. But 95% of the people that give fucks want to get fucked. That's what I'm really That's saying. That's true. Or they right. get a situation that, where they were stupid and they are... No, they want to get fucked. They want really? that guy, to get that, fucked. That, that guy that got turned out, he also killed his six-month-old baby. Oh, well, fool like that gets you like that, though. Well, he that deserves that. Get, oh, so he deserved that. 
Well, I, yeah, I, I, I've, I've heard what Toby Horrible. said is, is more the case. I know if you, I know if you homies been locked up for a long time and like, you know, through time and get conversations like they're like that doesn't have like you don't just get raped when you walk in there. It's not like that, you know. Like you, you attract that attention to you while you're there. When my brother was in prison, he said that he owed a lot of people money, but he he said when he gambled, he gambled in push-ups. So he owed like 150 push-ups, bro. Oh, man. He owed one guy 20, another guy 40, another guy 70. And he goes, what happened when you owe somebody push-ups, you got to serve them whenever they ask for them. So that fool be having a passing by somebody. He goes, hey, Angel, give me 30, fool. And that fool get on the floor and give him 30 push-ups. That's funny. That, that, that's when that, yeah, no, yeah, motherfuckers get down like that. Hey Toby, what do you think about uh, what do you think about Nick Cannon and what he was saying the other day? Nick Bannon. He told the truth. Now you've known uh, Nick. That's your old homie. Hey, um, yeah, he did. Uh, Butch. I, mean, I, I was thinking that that he wanted, like, he really wasn't really uh, caring about, because uh, I think that he knew Nick is very smart and intelligent. He knew he was gonna lose his situation with that shit by saying it. You know, they Viacom is wrong because they've had instances in the past where they didn't react so quick. Yeah. So it might <laughs> end up working out in his favor. But, you know, once you start quoting uh, Minister Fair kind of shit, white, white people, that's it. It's a rap thing. It's a rap. When you bring I up think, Minister Fair like, kind, it's a rap. It's funny, though. I watched that's, his, I watched, hall. that's what I was going to say. But I watched Nick saying it, and honestly, it sounds like he's new to all this. You know what I mean? It sounds like he's spewing out somebody else's You read one book. Well, when Farrakhan says it- One podcast, one speech. I can can remove my emotion from it that I'm a white person when Farrakhan's speaking. He's a very intelligent man, and he's not wrong about about a lot of the stuff he talks about. And I'm eloquent, sister. I I don't see it as hate speech. I see it as- we got our thing, they got their thing, let's let them have their thing. That's always how he's been, a separatist more than anything. But when I hear Nick saying it, I feel like Nick is saying it like he's just now learning about all this. Yeah, yeah, it and took it's the pandemic. Kind of new, and he looked at Professor Griff like he had some, like you're gonna back me up, oh yeah, 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 you're wrong, right. you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Didn't You're really right, young brother. Him. He didn't really say it like he he internalized this stuff yet. Right. Like he just heard it and he was repeating it, and it sounded weird. Like he's gonna get the t-shirt pretty soon. But but I don't, I don't know. But but Nick been around Faircon for a while, for a few years now. Yeah. He's that's been true. around yeah. Minister Faircon. People just, just don't, don't know. He doesn't have you know? the smoothness that Faircon has when he talks. The about charisma. It. Well, he was he was unsure what, probably still. Like, you know. Faircon got a hey, Faircon got sixty years of being smooth. Oh, That's sure. a whole nother <laughs> level. And sure. just Farrakhan just staying alive all the time he had. I know. Man, you know what it takes for a motherfucker like Farrakhan just to stay alive? I'm surprised right. he hasn't gotten taken not, out by not, other people. Not, 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 not only that, but the stigma of supposedly having killed Malcolm X. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like he's yeah. in the same world. I'm surprised they haven't turned on him. Something, but you know what? You know what's crazy about that, Lisa and Toby, that you guys mentioned that? Brutal is, Islam. Yeah, man. Fuck, right here at UCR, at University of California, Riverside, they did a, an attempt on his life, I think in 1998 or in the 90s. Yeah, that's Fairfax. true. Wow. And, uh, and that, yeah. yeah. Again. <laughs> and that's what's crazy. It's like you guys mentioned how oh, there we go. And I think there's only been that and another incident uh, where he's been like somewhat attacked or like you know somebody came at him. Yeah, it's well, been documented like or public. I don't. Uh, I don't no. have a problem with Farrakhan. I don't think he's been kind of no, 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 say, no. Like, you know. Hey, no, I mean no, I understand. Hey, he said stuff about I'm, Trump. I'm, he I'm said stuff about Mr. Fair, I'm with Minister Farrakhan. Oh, uh, he has bad wisdom. I just always yeah. felt like Farrakhan was just like, it was kind of like that, uh, I don't know if you know that musician Sun Ra back in the day. He was a jazz musician, a black man. That's where George Clinton gets all his look from Funkadelic, all the whole mothership and all that stuff. That's all from Sun Ra. Sun Ra was this jazz fusion, like crazy jazz uh, sound. He created this idea of a black planet. The mothership. Well, that's where the mothership, the mothership. idea comes from. And Chocolate Get in City, if you want to go. That, that Funkadelic talked about. 
But Sun Ra talked about, you know, black is, where there's no racism, where there's no white people. We just have our own world and we don't put Wakanda. up. Wakanda. No, kind of like that, yeah. But it was, it was his first, he was like this kind of nerd sci-fi guy and far out jazz musician, but he, he was out there. And, um, but that, those, that sort of idea of there's this other world where it's easier for us, it's better for us, we'll just all be together. I'm not, I'm not offended by that. I don't have a problem with that. And I don't, and Farrakhan's never been a, somebody who preached like violence toward another group or anything like that. Not that I've heard. No, Farrakhan stays in his Own lane. economy, own culture, all that shit. Us, us and then. Hey, he stayed in his lane. Lane. I don't see a problem with that. Yeah, they think Farrakhan, oh, Nick's what going but this Trump shit ain't, that's more, way more dangerous. Farrakhan stay in his lane. He don't fuck with nobody. He, you know, he can talk what he talk. He stay in his lane. Trump is in everybody's goddamn lane. He's the president of the United States. Right. He does, he's, he's leading over a lot of people who are very different. And he's sitting behind his desk with Goya shit on. With no, with no pants on. Dude, nobody <laughs> even that, heard of Goya till now, dog. Come on, um, fool. No, I love uh, Goya. I personally myself. love Goya, live in New York that's for tough, nine that's years. I've, I've never used any of that shit. Minister Louis Farrakhan. And you want some shit like that? Like, I've used <laughs> No, hey. What look, time, Mom? Oh, man. Hey, the yellow rice and the pinto beans. Oh, the yellow and with rice. The Goya sauce. Yeah. What time? Oh, wow, bro. That's crazy, hey, dog. I know like, that's you, mad East Coast shit. You don't shit. need Goya. You don't need Goya. You got, you, you're Mexican. You got people. You got Rosarita. Yeah, yeah but, but your ex is from the Bronx, and that's all like East Coast shit. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's why she used what? Goya. Oh no, as far as Goya, I finally started seeing Goya like lately yeah. in the last five to ten years on the West Coast. I remember yeah. on the East Coast and seeing that shit a lot. Yeah, you can only find oh. it because we had not That's all they had in New York. That's and what I'm saying. Out here, I couldn't oh. find it. Only we Ghetto Bonds. here. Ghetto has Rosarito. it, and also uh, the what's that place called? Uh, Liborio. Bayarta. Bayarta. Before. Bad Before plug. Goya, all that shit, everybody was just making their own stuff. That or fucking like that shit you posted the other day, La Costeña, and what? What's that other one? Yeah, but you Heaven. had back in the, yeah back in the day, you had to go to TJ to get that shit or El Mercadito. That was it, dog. En Goya, <coughs> en basa, no? En basa. Hey, um, Luis Farrakhan, one of the on one of his speeches, I saw he said that um he that he was telling um black American they, they should just go back. To that time when you know, like, not, 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 because he said that after segregation ended, he said a lot of bi black businesses went, to, went, went down. Like people stopped going to the black businesses. Once yeah, segregation we were doing ended. better by ourselves. Goes, exactly. That's yeah, what he's like. Black Wall Street goes, and all that stuff. That's but why, we gotta go that's back why, mentally. You gotta go back mentally and stop going to businesses, owning our own banks again. Owning hey, our own look, hotels. That's why, that's why people were mad. <laughs> he said at that uh, once the segregation ended, it made the black hotel the ghetto one. Right. <laughs> but I mean, the yeah, that's, 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 that made the black mall the ghetto one, or the the black neighborhood the worst one. Yeah, I mean, and so that's interesting. Why people, that's why people were mad at Martin Luther King because Martin Luther King was like, you know. Uh, everybody city bank. come together. Bank of America. Malcolm was like, "Yo, look, we had our we had our own shit already." I mean, that's why they Tulsa, burned dog. Down. Yeah, that's why they burned this shit down. And the thing is, is that it's like even when it comes to Obama, any anything, anytime black people make any progress, some fucked up shit happen right afterwards. All through history in America. Any progress we make is some shit to come. Something happens, to, an event happens to, to, to dismantle fuck, that to, shit. To yeah. just push it all back. Or I mean, I, 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 I I mean have look, a negative look, attitude Barack, to it. Hey, look, Barack was president, first black president, then here come Trump. This motherfucking racist, yeah. all this shit, and all yeah. this shit that's going on. Every time we make any the progress, extreme. white America, white America... Uh, has to smack it, it back. It pushes her back down. They have That's to smack it thing. back down. Yes, that I shit agree has with been you. Like that shit's slavery. Yeah. Just like we alternative don't... comedians. Just like, exactly, a, bro. Like, just, it's like that in comedy, bro. Like, like if you're like a Latino comedian, like, like um, when a black comedian got so fucking funny, and then Latino comedian got so fucking funny, 
they gotta put a label us to the side. Oh, yeah. he's just doing that. Seg- segregate Ur- us. Urban. Or he's doing black comedy. Motherfucker, I'm doing comedy just like you. I'm just funnier. I feel yeah. like I, I feel like I feel like that was the problem then, and I, I wasn't around for comedy then, but it was like it was too easy for us to put each put ourselves in the bucket. And because they were like, oh, well, you guys could be all Mexican together over here. Mm-hmm. And and that was and because we were offered money and we were offered things, you know, all of a sudden you see Paul Rodriguez, you see George Lopez, you start seeing Latino comics pop up, but they're all getting pushed over here. Hey, locos. And, and it was too easy to to fall into that because none of us, nobody's ever had anything, you know, like like. Yo. <laughs> and and so that's the thing is like now we're starting to realize like dude these clubs that's the whole thing that's coming out right now along with this whole Black Lives Matter and everything is like people are calling out comedy clubs too because oh, oh, so yeah <clears throat> these comedy clubs have been crazy hey, man. those stupid theme nights and then they put all hey, these cool. yep. Nice. Was they put, hey, fuck the they comedy put the part of it. this is 400 oh. over 400 years of nonsense of there was this, an article this, and the LA Times about no Rape Latino, or no black photos at, at um at um uh, at the fucking groundlings. Wow. Well, them the UCB and those yeah. fools, the groundlings and the the they're all getting heat from supposedly being like racist or whatever. But I mean, if you look at their trajectory of everybody they put on TV or had on their rosters, the majority is white. But then the ca- counter argument is how many Latinos, how many blacks try to go through that avenue to get to that fucking, um, to get into that world of uh, show business. Well, but a lot, hey, look, people, no, but a look, lot of people, a lot of black and Latino comics don't want to go down that route because they, yeah. so they don't feel comfortable going down that path. I don't, hey, look, you know? but see, I don't even know why people are mad at those motherfuckers because you know what? That's their <laughs> shit. If they want to, if they want to put all white people on it, like how can we get mad at, at the, at the uh, motherfucking, Groundlings, because all they do is white. Then we got to start our own shit. If that's what they doing over there, you can't force your way in. We know they done done some foul shit, but that's still that's they motherfucking right. The same way the Klan got a right to let people in. The same way the NAACP we got a right. But we know they. I don't think it's their shit. right. I don't think it's, it's their right to it's shut people on, out. It's, a, yeah, it's right. a bigger level than well, them. You know, I, I it's live- not their right to shut people out. I think that a lot of people in those situations they recruit. For real, I never been booked at cops. Well, they recruit huh. their friends, or they always. <laughs> There's a lot to pick, say about you know, Bay Area comedy, they man. Pick people right here, who are around themselves, and they pick people who look like themselves because they're that's all they're thinking of. Is all my. That's friends. all they know too. That friend yeah. so and so, but it's technically it's inherently racist because they're not expanding, not branching out, and it's sexist if you're a guy putting a show and it's all. You realize there's nine dudes on the show, not hey, one. But the thing is, right. is though, you didn't have you, a car. You're absolutely right, but they don't have to let us in their group. They don't. Well, they do technically if they're a school like that. If they're a business, they technically. Yeah, but hey, look how many businesses keep uh, minorities out. Here, here, here's here's the problem. Here's the problem that I have with that, though. Here's the problem that I have with that thinking, though, Toby, is that that is that if you let them have their own thing and we have their our own thing, then it's going to be just like that. That, that like like we were talking about I'm earlier. Saying. That's that, not like, what I'm saying. They're taking the lion's share of things, and it's like, no, dude, you have to share that. No, to they, me, no, no, they don't. Y- no, they don't. I'm saying. We know it's morally wrong, but they don't have to do shit. That's their shit. They started it. If you start some shit, Butch, tomorrow, if you start a company, right. now it might be morally right for you to hire different ethnicity, but you don't have to do it. Uh, legally, thing. if you're hiring somebody, yeah, you, do. Legally, you cannot prevent yes, you do. from I'm working saying. there because of race. Saying. I know. You know what? I know what you're. I know what you're. I know what you're trying to say. And, and when I'm here, you're, you're legit. Say. Legitimately, oh. you have to. Yeah, legitimately. I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Shit ain't happened legitimately in 400 years for minority. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what the fuck I'm saying. What's been legit for us? What's you legit know. for Mexicans right now? No, Name I something. Yeah. They tried to look. They Not tried to Goya. send the motherfucking... Look, hey, they, said to, they said to the international student, 
if your class is online, you got to lead the country. Can I, can I, shit been the, but, but, the, I mean, just the thing, but the thing with just, Latinos, though, Toby, is that they've been doing all that shit, like own banks, own communities, yeah. own little shit forever, but they don't yeah. advertise you know, it. It's like, leave us alone, and we'll do our own little hey, let me, shit. Let me just How say like this. the Chinese let me just, or the Asian? Let me just say something that you yeah, could maybe, like, maybe you could relate to. I'm not in L.A. like you guys, okay? So there's not an influx of black comics, an influx of Mexican comics. Latino, There's like five yeah. Mexican comics out here, okay? And and so we're... Starting, bro. So I'll tell you right now, uh, <laughs> I've never... Uh, it's not necessarily I'm racism not, here. It's classism. Not, and classes. I try to push Look. through that... I, hold on. Let me just say something. I try to push through this ceiling every day because the only way that I can, can come up yeah, on top so here in the Bay Area is to break through their barrier. And and, hey, and and be part of what they're doing because I want a piece of that. Now, if I just go off and do my own thing, there's going to be five Mexicans doing one little club. Y'all missing if, my point. It has nothing to do with comedy. This is systematic racism that's set up all the way around. It's so and, much bigger than comedy. And man. I'm trying to say it I'm needs to be broken. Comedy. I'm saying it's systematic racism that's way bigger than comedy. The comedy part of this shit it's a fraction, and we know it's right. I'm only but using it as an a, example. I'm only using it as an example. But, what but, I'm saying is, of hey, systematic look, racism. When you when you got black skin and you got to walk out your house every day with black skin, it's so much bigger than comedy. It's so much bigger. What's your point so, though? What's what are you getting at though? What's so what I'm saying is it's a systematic, the way the groundlings work and the way all those places work is the same way every other white businesses work, no matter what field it is. So even if it's fair game, it's still like, like no, it's like, not fair, it's not right, it's not that's what I'm saying. right. But they say it is, but it really isn't. It. On the they, I mean, black people, I mean, just think we couldn't even drink out of the same water faucet until just 60 years ago. I so how they gonna let us in the job? Dude, but I feel your pain, dude. But also with the same notion, dude, you gotta bring it like to not be divisive. And you know, it's 2020, and right. we all gotta get in the system. And right. dude, I used to think weird little ways when I was younger. But then you go like to the DA's office. They're black prosecutors, a Salvadorian prosecutor, a white one, a motherfucker from Nebraska. You know what I'm saying? And we all have to work together through all the fucking madness. The same people that pay taxes and raise families or just want to move forward, that don't want to see shit crumble. You gotta just fucking be in that mindset and say, fuck all hey, that, yo. fucking uh. But all of that's different though, Rob Because we was talking about letting in the groundlings. I said they don't have that's a private group, they don't have to do shit. Well, okay, that's true. That's like, like the they don't have to let in. a certain kid in the boy scout. But they the, don't have the to. ground with the groundlings or with I UCB or whatever. The thing is, I think that strikes people the most is that those people who run that place they think of themselves as non racist equal and non-racist people so right. when now all of a sudden okay yeah. this is the thing that a lot of white people don't do but this is be, you know when i grew up i talk about the transition when i left high school where i went to school with all black kids and then i go to college and it was all white because i went to the all my friends went to hc hbcus but i went to the white college or the one in town and i was like there's a lot of white people here but a lot of white people don't realize how white everything is. Yeah. Something like this happens. So I think a lot of white students at the ground, groundlings or UCB places, because it's not all jobs, Toby. It's, you know, it's students. It's people who come there and they put on shows or whatever. They become members or whatever, members. So those people, you're right. They don't have to technically bring them in and be diverse and look at that. But I think all of a sudden, white members their white students are looking around and going there's nobody black on this wall you know or there's nobody who's not white on well that's wall. what i was trying to yeah. say that's so that's yeah. what i was trying to say with Bay, so that's what i was trying to say with bay area comedy like <laughs> these people are not racist out here as far as like hey, like they don't look. think they're racist they just don't know they don't they don't notice they don't. the uh that there's that they're leaving people out Hey, check this out, y'all. Look at it this way. Just think of how we're just talking about the groundlings as an example. We're just mentioning the groundlings. <laughs> okay. Can I'm you mentioning imagine... the improvs or the other ones. Can you... No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not talking my, about my world, the comedy I mean, my bar. world is comedy. I'm talking man. about life in general. Let's just look at life in general for people of color. 
Okay, if we can find a problem with the groundlings, which we know we can, and we know they were morally wrong for the way they've acted all these years. Think about all the other jobs. It don't matter if it was a, a, a minority who was a janitor or a minority who worked at the airport. No matter where we worked or no matter what went down, we have been treated foul for hundreds of years. Yes, like, nobody's agreeing with that, though. Profession. I don't know what you're bringing. Why yeah. are you bringing that up? I yeah, but a motherfucker said, yeah. Hey, that's true. So, I, yeah, I mean, I, you know, know, that's, that's true. true. What do you, that's true. About it, it's been fucked up, man. Like, I read an article about the first black Everything police officer, deal. and uh, the birth, the first black police officer, he couldn't even arrest white people. Fuck! Wow. Wow. Well, police force. Like they asked him, what, what if a black reason. guy and a white guy rob a bank? <laughs> well, I will arrest that N word and let the white guy go home, mm-hmm. and later on, someone will go to his house and pick him up. That's the history of police forces, though. A lot of they were there to catch slaves, and a lot of right. Police but you, were created to, to catch slave runaways. A twelve, right? I don't sundown. I don't know. The I first. was gonna say, oh, um, boats. but that's a that's a cool thing about we do like stand up comedy that you meet people from all races, dude, mm-hmm. and that it all comes together, different views, different orientations, and you can actually discuss and shit and go like, you know what, whatever it is, it's wrong, but no matter what, we have to move forward, dog. And get yeah, on you know what it is. Like, fucking pandemic look. or any bullshit that's gone, the riots, and move, dude, no matter what, dude, shit's always going to happen. The riots in L.A. happened, these new riots, but we just move forward, and that's it, dude. Hey, look, and the reason why I was saying what I was saying is because as black people... We have to pick our battles. And what I'm saying is one of our ba- our Same battles with is the groundlings. Our battles, our battles are way bigger than the groundlings. So when people choose to pick that, even though they're right, you're right. When they choose to pick over that George as Floyd, battle, it's a difference in weight. And it's way more serious shit happening than us sliding getting in the ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, well, that's we know, man, they want to change the name like people like like they're getting rid of um like the word blackmail. <laughs> Dude, what what was that other the house word, right? The word oh, about the house. Master bedroom. Master oh, bedroom. Master there you go, bed. dog. Yeah, no, that's yeah, dumb. That's that. just dumb. That's you know what I'm saying? Dude. Come on now. Mr. Bedroom. Oh no, that's right. That's a second. Uh, <laughs> that's all yeah, room. They all that little stuff. All that little stuff they're doing right now. They take yeah. it away. That's a deflection. All that stuff. Distraction, bro. All that stuff they're doing, like taking away the little thing like that. Master bedroom. It's just to take away from the cause. To make it look, oh, they're going after master bedroom, but they never wanted master bedroom off. That's just yeah. a confusion, bro. To confuse everybody and then later on, oh, these motherfuckers want everything off. Now I can't say, you know, I can't say uh, black this, black that. Right. I don't even. I don't even think it's that. I think they don't have any other way to show their support. You know, to show that they're behind it, other than to do some change that they think they. I'll have. give you. I'll give you. I'll give you, an, I'll give you. They an got example. rid of Heckle and Jekyll. I give no, you they should have heckle and jekyll our races. <laughs> okay, I'll give you an example. Okay, now they, let, they didn't let Hi, black pies. people. They didn't let black people in the groundlings. Okay, that's an example. But what's even worse than that is that there's three black coaches in the NFL when 80 percent of the players are black and been playing. And they made millions and billions of dollars for these owners. That's worse than the groundlings. So I'm just saying, yeah, but- so much shit bigger. The groundlings yeah, will let you in, and you as long as you keep that's on paying, saying. paying. Yeah, you but, might not be in the elite group or whatever, yeah. but you know what I mean. Everybody gets yeah. a chance. Come on, now. yeah, they. Yeah, that's the fly. thing. It, it might be insignificant or might seem insignificant compared to other things, but why not go after everything? You know, there yeah, are. I mean, that's yeah. what they're doing. There are people who want to yeah, that's what the it's, 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 yeah, there go are a lot of people who want to be in sketch comedy at UCB or wherever. Hey, because what makes you remarkable is that Kelly Park. Let's go back to. Hilo, cocksucker. Yeah. Kelly Park that put the article out on the groundlings. I know her. I know her husband, John, and her daughter, Sydney. And so she was right. Cause she Joe Rogan, through. I need a raise. Stop it, Rodriguez. She, she been through the racism. <laughs> so that's why she put the article out, because she lived it. So that's understandable. They had hoods on, y'all. Hey, give us up Joe Diaz and Joe Rogan, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's when the fucking flavor hits. You know what I'm saying? You spread those legs and... You get it like a little miss, you know what I'm saying? When you're throwing so much, that little thing comes on. It's all it's a quarter in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Enough, enough, settle down, cocksucker. Enough, 
to get a little fucking a little moisture. You know what I'm saying? Wow, that right. sounds interesting. Now, what <laughs> I use for moisture on my elk meat is the Traeger grill. Fuck the Traeger grill. Suck my dick with the okay. Traeger grill. Okay, boy, it's after 10. Hey, boy, where did you, you go, boy? <laughs> yeah. Just couldn't cancel where me, cocksucker. Thank you for being on the podcast, cocksucker. Why well, I can't hear you. Hello to Chris Story. Comedy. Wait. I, what what city did you start comedy? What or, city I started in San Jose. Um, My very first show was actually at the Improv. I had a friend who ran it, and who ran a show there, an off-night show. And she was like, dude, you're hilarious. Like, come and do this comedy show. I'll even help you write like three minutes. I wrote like three minutes. I went up and did it. I worked at a bar. I worked at the caravan in downtown San Jose. So I had like hella friends that like I was a bartender there. So like everybody came out. Uh, I threw up in the in the in the green room before I went up. Damn. spaghetti. But yeah, I started in San Jose, man. So he threw up in the green room. Yeah, I threw up. Not like the green room, that, little, room. that little like waiting area behind backstage at the San Jose Improv. I threw oh, up. Wait, wait, you see that like uh, that that oh, yeah. basement down there? Yeah. Bro, yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. I was I was going to my perform one time. I think I, I was headlining, and I went right there and I saw a big worm sitting there. Like what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> Another pile, bro. Oh god, big another pile of <laughs> another pile of human flesh. Steve Just big worm? What's his name? Uh, big, big, worm. big Worm. Yeah, that was his name, right? Wasn't his it? Name? Who's Worm? Yeah. Big he had worm. a real name, though. Long hair like he would pull out a burrito hair. in the big middle of his act. Dude. He would like, he'd go, I got, like, his whole bit was like, he'd go and go, and then in the middle of his act, he'd pull out a huge ass burrito and start eating it, doing more comedy. I remember that, Damn. dude. Yeah. That yeah. Talk about pulling chicks and shit. Herman oh, Romero. My, that was his real name. Big Worm Herman Romero. Herman? Uh, Herman, yeah, hey, were big those burritos worm, big worm. Were, were those burritos business write offs? Like, <laughs> they were huge, bro. They were like huge, <laughs> fucking, hey, bro. They're, 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 hey, hey, yeah, hey, they're as big as okay. One more thing, real quick. They're yeah, never yeah. eating burrito, bro. <laughs> yeah, that was important. Let's cut the let's... <laughs> <Next> <laughs> right off. That, was, that had to be said. Oh <laughs> I'm sorry, That's 10 o'clock. Let's go. What's up, Bush? Uh, Bush what, what's your next show? Uh, my next show <laughs> is actually I have a Zoom show, show on the twenty fourth. I'm running it. If you guys want to, uh, if people want to get on, message me at Butch Escobar on Instagram, and uh, and I'll and I'll let you guys know how to get into it. Uh, check out my podcast. Oh yeah, you're a bad. If you were a badass um, guest, man. So probably didn't have you before. It was uh, awesome. You know, I had fun, man. You know, time go by fast, dude. Let yeah, me know dude. when you want me to come I back. I had so like much fun. Two hours, dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. And you I had a blast. Didn't even, right on, you, didn't really, you didn't really touch the surface and shit. That not even close. We not even touch. Yeah, yeah, close. That was that one time you and the homie hooked up with that girl with a broken leg. <laughs> get up, dog. <laughs> hey, bro, I'll never forget. She had a missing leg, and we didn't know that until he got in the room with her, right? And then the next morning, we see you guys for breakfast, and you go, and you go. How'd you tell her to get out? You better hop to it or what, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the leg? Oh, <laughs> God. You guys never seen the wrestler with Mickey Work? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Oh, you sorry. told me, Rodrigo, Martin yeah. Nice seeing hey, you guys. Hey, guys. This podcast is Good to see podcast. you guys. I'll do yeah, it again. Oh, Let me man, know whenever. You guys. Hopefully, we'll too, guys. Love all yeah. you guys, man. Love all you guys. Thank you. No dealers podcast. Yeah, so man. Fun. What's up, fool? So fun.